This is a HeadGum Podcast. Greetings, Nadpoles. It is I, the Breakfast Wizard, here to talk to you about Magic Spoon, the sacred artifact I use to cast my serial mancy spells. After years of... Oh, what's that? Ah, oh, it turns out this is an ad for Magic Spoon the Serial, not by spellcasting focus. As such, I'm going to let Caldwell take over. Ta-ta! Hey gang, Caldwell here. Sorry about that. Real quick, here is what you need to know. Birthday cake flavor is back. That's right, this limited edition cereal was so popular that Magic Spoon brought it back, and now you can get it for yourself. For a limited time, Magic Spoon is offering a free box of birthday cake cereal with every purchase, including subscriptions. This cereal is normally $10, so this gift with purchase is a great deal. To take advantage of this offer, head to magicspoon.com slash day to grab a custom bundle of cereal and get a free box of birthday cake and try the magic for yourself. Remember, this exclusive offer is only available to NADPOD listeners. So go to magicspoon.com slash day to add a free box of birthday cake to any order. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it is backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. Okay, the Breakfast Wizard is still loose in my house somewhere, so I have to go. Thanks for listening, and see you next time. Welcome to the campaign after the campaign. This is not another D&D podcast. Welcome back to Bahumia, everyone. Bahumia. I'm your Dungeon Master, Brian Murphy, joined by Jake Hurwitz. Hard one, sure foot. Emily Axford. Moonshine Sabin. Whomper of Miners and Conjurer of Vinerd. Oh, oh. Wow. Thank you, Hooray. thank you. That will be me for this episode. <laughs> oh, she's going to sleep. <laughs> she's trancing again. <laughs> and, of course, Caldwell Tanner. Beverly Togold V, Prince Hunter. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, cover that's of a graphic novel for sure. really misleading because you want to find him. You don't want to kill the, him, right? That's what I was about to say. Is it's fun to say hunter about something that you're looking for for a good reason? Yeah, you're hunting for the like prince. deal hunter. The exactly. prince was also on a hunt. It's so just he is the prince guacamole hunter. Guacamole hunter. It adds an air of urgency. Okay, that's Have the we name of the episode. Guacamole in. Bohemia That's yet? a very good question. Has the blue mana in? Absolutely not. <laughs> we had sliders. I, there's definitely been some guac on a slider. <laughs> Do you have guac on sliders usually? You, you, know, you have guac. it as, a, as, a, as an appetizer to the sliders. You get <laughs> chips and guac for the table and then sliders. Hey, you guys have to fucking order Onion it, man. Rings. You guys, this is a give and take D&D. So if you guys okay. want some guac, you got to order some guac. <laughs> right. You got to, listen, you, you need to leave gaps in your map. You need to leave room for guac. Yeah. <laughs> I've been leaving room for guac. You guys haven't been asking for it. That's actually great advice for just going to a restaurant. Leave yeah. room for guac. Leave room for guac. Every time. Yeah, you guys have had when salsa. When you go to a restaurant, you are telling a story with the waiter, and you mm-hmm. need to make sure that you're collaborating. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, everyone, enough talk about guac and salsa. <laughs> Let's do a little recap. So last week, you guys installed Joris as head of the new Thieves Guild. Ooh, I forgot. And convinced all of the dwarfins to move into underground tunnels. You also tabletopped a teenager and kicked shit into his mouth. <laughs> We're good and smart. <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> See, I feel like by calling him a teenager, you're not like calling him what he really was. He was a shithead, so now he has a shit mouth. (laughs) Uh, You guys then headed to the Fox and the Thrush, the bar where you were supposed to meet Jaina Bronzebeard. Once there, you were confronted by Jaina and her men about your involvement in Gemma's murder. The knights searched you and found a ton of incriminating evidence, Mm. including the murder (laughs) weapon, some cursed Mm. armor that drove one of Jaina's family members insane Hmm. and various other artifacts of the nine hells that you picked up along your journey. Should have left the bag outside. (laughs) Oops. Yep. Should have put that in a trash can outside and gotten it later. We need, you know what we need for the bag of holding? We need, um, we need a false bottom to the bag of holding. (laughs) There should be a bag within the bag. You guys need a box of holding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just like a padlock or something. We need a trap bag. (laughs) 
Jaina and her men attacked, but you guys restrained most of them and refused to engage in actual combat. Finally, Hard One offered his neck to Jaina, who almost took his head off before thinking better of it. Jaina ordered her men to stop, regained her senses, then you guys talked her through everything that has happened so far. Uh, she informed you that her father, along with some Bronzebeard men and Winter Wolves, had headed out into the tundra to look for the Pale Prince and the King's Hammer. Uh, you also asked Jaina uh, if she had ever seen a prison gem like the one containing Ulfgar before, and she said only once in her father's workshop. Mm. Uh, you bid your goodbyes for the night, but then Jaina returned in the morning to talk to Moonshine. Moonshine had mentioned earlier in your conversation that Meemaw had a high-level druid spell that could possibly bring Gemma back and Jaina was desperate to try it and asked to borrow the airship so she could find Mima, and that's where you are oh, now. Oh, right. I gotta ask hard one to borrow yeah. the airship. So, Moonshine, you are in this empty tavern with Jaina. There's a little bit of daylight pouring in from behind the curtains, but otherwise it's pretty dark in there. Jaina hasn't slept. She's very determined and manic. She's still holding the clump of hair that she's pulled from Gemma's I have, body. I have a question. Would less her restoration soothe her uh, her sleep crazies? Uh, perhaps. Only perhaps? It would help a bit. You still yeah, got to sleep. Skin. What about, uh, what about uh, lesser moisturize? That would certainly help with the okay, bag. shoot. Yeah. So can I? Yeah, you see she like is <laughs> clenching the hair in her hand. Should know. we go ask him? Should we go upstairs? Second level spells worth a bit. Yeah, follow me. Follow me. And, you know, uh, you kind of were a bit, uh, you were toasty with uh, Hard One last night, so you might want to take a calm, smooth demeanor tonight. Right. Okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, she kind of uh, tries to steal herself. Okay. She gets a very serious face on. So we creep in. You guys creep in. We're just going to, we're not going to like do a big wake up of Hard One. We're just going to kind of like, like wake him up but without like actually wake him waking him up for the I'd day i'd like to uh, say for the green teen board that it were, beverly and i are sleeping head to toe <laughs> <laughs> head to toe you must go I, when I, you I, sleep with an older I joe that to we Gina. made a song for it I did they say, sleep head to toe all night yeah Gina, he's a real good scout master and balnor's just snoring so loudly in the corner on the chair <laughs> rocking <laughs> <laughs> What's the um, He's like choking. He's got sleep apnea. Sleeping in a chair is such a great dad move. Yeah. Oh yeah. What's the, what's the uh, wardrobe situation? Hard one. Uh, shirtless, but pants. I always wear the <laughs> pants. Full length pants. 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 I sleep next to Bev. I wear the pants. But, you, but Bev's got a yin and yang thing, so he's uh, <laughs> shirtless, pantsless, no pants. but shirt. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long shirt, but still. <laughs> like if, if a nice strong shirt. breeze came in, it'd be trouble. Bev definitely sleeps in a long shirt yeah. <laughs> and a cap. Oh, he sleeps in one of Hard One's shirts. Oh, oh, it's from a conference you went to. They're PJs for him. Yeah. <laughs> or Moonshine's one of Moonshine shirts. He's a teeny man. Yeah. No, I do hard one. And you do have huge breasts. <laughs> yeah, he's got a real bat, just a really Moonshine. wide shirt. That's Moonshine why, like, and hard one should share shirts. Yeah, I was going to say, men with broad shoulders actually can fill out Moonshine's. Oh, yeah. And we both yeah. have badonka dogs. Yeah, it fits. It's really, the only difference is the height. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the upper part of the shirt fits great, and then it just shows your midriff uh, <laughs> if you wear Moonshine shirts. Uh, so Jane is, awesome. yeah. Jane is like, so we, we get right up into hard one's face, but we do that thing where like he doesn't have to wake up. It's like we're leaving for a flight. You know, Harwan. and it's kind of like uh, slowly touching his shoulder. Yeah. Hard one, hard one, mm. hard one, mm. hard one. Can uh, mm. can China borrow your airship? Mm. 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 I put my feet in Moonshine's face. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Oh, hard one is in the middle bit. of a dream and just says, "Mm hmm." Okay, this feels wrong. I'm gonna wake him up a little more. I'm gonna wake him up a little more. Ah, uh, Jaina slaps you across the face. Hard one, we have a chance. We can still save her. I have her hair. Hey yo! Uh, as he uh, shoves the ball of hair in your mouth. Jaina, what I say about that delicate temper? Well, you know, we we only have nine days to bring Gemma back, but we can do it. My God, we can do it, hard one. Uh, suck my hog, Akarat. Hey, wait, what's up? <laughs> it, it still smells like her, right? Mm. Hard one. Uh. Gina wants to borrow the airship so she can go down to Mima and try and turn this hair into a, a living person. Because, you know, head is just, hair is just dead skin. You're talking about reincarnation? Yeah. Oh. Um, or I could just use the devil book. Jaina, whatever you need to do, take the ship. 
Hmm. The SS Stormborn is yours. I'm telling you, I think that if you bring her back in in a good way, in an honest way, in a wholesome, earth-loving way, it's going to be a better life for her. I, I, I agree. And yes. you know what? My my father ordered me uh, to stay in the castle and get to know Cyril Coldane, but my first order was to protect Gemma. So in a way, I'm not even breaking an order. In yes. a way, I'm being the best uh, Iron Deep knight that I can be. That's sure, right. yeah. but Gina, also, you got to get into disobeying your father. Yeah, I I disobey people all the time. Cool. Right? This kid knows. Yeah. What? <laughs> um, I love to disobey Jay, a dad. Yeah. Jay, I, no, what do you what else do you need from us? If I have your blessing, there's there's some, you know, knights from Galateron that came with us. I think there's probably a few guys that I can trust, probably that know their way around an airship. Uh, Keep it close. Um yes. Papa. Rare. Uh, we got one of the most important letters we've ever written Rare. to be writing. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna di- I'm gonna dictate. Okay. Y'all got a pen? Papa's gonna roll <laughs> an intelligence check. <laughs> Shout out to the two. Yeah. Wow! <laughs> How is the dice so fucking poetic sometimes? Papa. Uh, Bev, you look over and yeah, you yeah, see yeah. it's. Uh, I uh, don't know ahead. that he rolled a two, so I'm yeah. just going. Rare. Dear me, ma. <laughs> I send... Dar Momo. <laughs> <laughs> Hard one's nodding approvingly, approvingly over my uh, shoulder. Like, this is just the routine. It's like, they're all doing this, and I'm off to the side writing the actual letter. <laughs> I have dispatched a close personal friend who bears a close personal artifact that represents... Okay, it's we need a reincarnation spell, and this girl is coming with my blessing. They are good people. They are good stock, and this is a soul that this world deserves back. Uh, you see Papa is just sucking on the feather pen. I'm so I made proud a, of him. I'm so proud of him. I made a duplicate. Uh, Papa, tell, tell her that uh, it's my girlfriend. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it, maybe like a <laughs> P.S. to Mama. Say... P.S. Mama, this is Hardwan's girlfriend. Can you write official, Papa, right there? <laughs> he starts spitting up the ink on it. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> so, like, just really in case, for, for legal reasons, I did make a duplicate. Okay, I throw it in the grenade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, why don't we, you know what? Why don't I take both? That would be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good call, uh, good all right. call. Hardwan, did you, in the dwarfenage, did they not have uh, classes? They did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. just checking. I read and write with the best of them. <laughs> you sure oh, do. Also, um, can we unload a couple nanoflies on you? Those I don't things know. are breeding like crazy. <laughs> roll to see how many nanoflies are in. <laughs> Wait, do roll, just... roll a d20 to see how many nanoflies are in your jar right now. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, no. Oh, no. Did you roll a one? It's an extinction. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's only one nanorfly in there Extinction now. Extinction level event. The absolute worst number you could have rolled. All right, I gotta, I gotta at least mix this nanorfly with other flies. Hard one. Where's Use some your luck frost roll. flies? Where's huh. some frost flies? I'm Is, looking for a frost are fly. Are there no more nanorflies at the crick? There probably are, but right now I'm worried about getting this guy's little wiener into something. My sister is dead, <laughs> and you're talking about nanor flies. Um, I'm she gonna, smacks hard one again. Can Why? I investigate for frost flies? <laughs> to see if there are like frost wind nanor flies. Yeah. To see if there are frost thing. flies. No, no, yeah. It doesn't need to be a nanor fly. I just am <laughs> just looking around the hotel room. Sure. Roll a like search check or a um, I try to nature a- check. Apologize to Gina a little bit. I'm like, we do grief weird. <laughs> Sorry hey, about 21. that. Twenty one. Twenty one. You managed to trap a fly, Moonshine. <laughs> All right, I'm, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it be natural at first, so I'm just going to shove it into the jar with my nanor fly and <laughs> the na- hope the magic happens. You see happens. it's furiously trying to get away. The nanor fly just, like, bites it in half and starts just ripping it apart. Uh, I was uh, hoping for a Jon Snow Daenerys sort of situation. <laughs> I think I'm going to I'm gonna give Jaina my captain's hat. Oh. Ooh. If she's captain of the Stormborn. You'll get this back. Someday, hard one. Good. I'm going to go beyond the wall, and I'm going to find the Pale Prince, and we're going to figure out what the hell's going on. A lot and, of big stuff going on. Yeah. yeah. Um, just one last dumb thing. Don't go into... There's a secret compartment in my room. Don't open it. Okay. Got it? Yeah. We good? Of course. Yes. Thank you, you promise. You, you have my word, <laughs> and I don't break my word. Good. Oh. I, I said that I was going to protect Gemma, and I'm going to protect Gemma. Good. Oh. Uh- 
Um, I just to piggyback off a hard one. He did have me put some spells around it in case. I guess there's you know birth, birth certificate or something in there. It's a birth certificate. Yeah. So it, there's it's a trap door. Go ahead and roll a deception check. Oh <laughs> fuck. She either either one of you guys. Eleven. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's use her eleven. So you just you just got uh, kind of nods and goes. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dig through your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Until Whatever you do on your own time is fine. Until we meet again, Jaina. Until we meet again, hard one. Thank you. I I would say I owe you my life, but, you know, really, we kind of got her killed by letting our guard down. Oh, so totally. When she is, comes back, let's... Let's, let's let pre- her just... Let's just beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> yeah. I think we should just... <laughs> We should just pound each other in the face. We owe her that. Yeah. This is beautiful. All right, we'll wrestle when we return. <laughs> uh, as she leaves, I whisper, you know they're all going to call you Gina there, right? I, that's fine. I come in I'm for proud a big of hug. You. God's be, Gina. <laughs> uh, Jaina, Jaina gives you guys all hugs. and uh, Melora speed, pardon me. And uh, she goes, thank you. You've given me a reason to live. You've given me hope. I'm telling you, you are taking the righteous path. You are not going to regret this. You would have regretted any dalliance you had with that book, but you will not regret taking a righteous path like this. Morden's beard shines upon you. Yeah. Thank you. It is a luscious beard. Well, I heard he's got a brother's sister's grooming (laughs) oil. (laughs) Great plug. She punches Moonshine in the stomach, and she doesn't know why. Whoa. I'm so sorry. I don't know why, why that was I did so that. smart. She punches hard one in the face. I she misses because my beard I just, is so I feel oily. Compelled to do this. Somebody else is making me do it. I don't know. Uh, and she goes. She looks at you so seriously, Moonshine, and she goes, "If your Mima can bring back my sister, I will protect her." With my life, I will make sure your Mima lives to be a very old elf, and you have my word. My Mima is the most powerful person on this on this goddamn green and brown place. Uh, but I do want to warn you that you are quite emotional right now, and I think that a night's sleep will only will only help you bring your sister back in the healthiest way possible. I worry that the longer I wait, the more chances are that somebody will try to commandeer the ship. The king might want it for his I own underst- fleet. I absolutely something. understand that. Right now, I scoped it out this morning. Are I went, in the territory I just, of being your own worst I know, enemy. I, I, I just happened to pop. I popped by there at like 6 a.m., like an hour ago. There were there are a, a few iron dwarves on there. I think I've got enough pull around here that if I get some of my men, I can maybe get the iron dwarves off the boat for a second, okay, and we can we kind of shoot off. We have to at least help them get we're the iron dwarves. Yeah, we'll yeah. escort you. I think that might not be the best idea for you guys. Uh, uh, but I think it might be the best idea for you. Trust me, I can do this. Let's, All right. Okay. okay yeah. You um, got nine days. Get your first night rest on the ship. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Don't don't fly tired. I'll I'll let one of the people from uh, Galateron fly it. I'm not planning on. All right. Um, I'm not a captain. Okay. Can I give her like a quick touch hands to like give her a little pep? Sure. But if if you guys want to do like you guys can do like healing type like cantrips. You guys don't need to waste okay, uh, cool. okay. any of your actual stuff. Cool. Yeah. We do that. Cool. Right. You guys um, just kind of use your holy auras and stuff. You say a quick mm-hmm. prayer with her. She says a very stern, like, she does like a very stern reading of her Iron Deep oath. I uh, I pour a cup of coffee and then I scream the word Pelor into it over and over again. <laughs> I write, I write uh, Melora in griddle cakes uh, and like burn it a little bit and then pour more griddle cake on it so that then when I flip it over, it says Melora on it. <laughs> she just... <laughs> pounds of pancake <laughs> breakfast and drinks so much coffee and you see she looks a little bit better. I write her name on the cup and I do spell it correctly. <laughs> oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. I understand. And you guys can call me Gina if you really want. <laughs> You've given me... Uh, I can call you by your first name. My name is Jaina. God damn it. I'm sorry. I'm actually not ready for it. Just please call me Jaina. If you want to, when I'm not here, call me Jaina. That's fine. But just in general, okay. Jaina. But thank you. Um, be safe. Be on the wall. Hopefully there is a world for us to meet up again in. We will. There will be. Yeah. Be smart. Get some sleep. And there will be. You better come back because you got my goddamn hat. She nods. 
and puts the hat on. She looks really silly in it. <laughs> it's an oh, awesome yeah. hat. You have a big head. Damn right I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she just looks like like an old timey football player. Like it just goes way too low. <laughs> and you see Jaina Bronze Beard heads off. All right, y'all. You think we should follow her? I think we got to wake up Balnor and get ourselves over the fucking wall. We, <sighs> y'all don't think that we need to like follow her and just like maybe spy and make sure that she... She, ha- she has like a meaningful mission. She wants to bring her sister okay. back. She doesn't have she's the book. She doesn't like have the armor. This is unhinged. She's, but I think I think, I think it's a righteous unhinging. Yeah, okay. it's like it's like kicking down a door. I'm Just okay saying, with her amount like, of unhinged. It's like a scarecrow without its stuffing, you know? It's yeah, just creepy. I That's feel, still a bag. I feel the same way that she does. I'm just better at being chill about it. Yeah, you seem real chill. <laughs> I got a full nine last night. Um, Kid Cudi is still blasting. Kid <laughs> Cudi, <laughs> Mr. Solo Nolo. Yeah, I I okay. want to help her, All but. Right. We can only help so many royals in this town. <laughs> you know what? That's a beautiful point. Mm-hmm. I stand down. And we got to get that hammer because uh, if the giants get it, they're going to just destroy the world. And okay. I really hope that, that Jane is okay. But I feel like saving the entire world is maybe a higher priority. I'm, I I, I'm, just, as, if... I'm just as worried about this fucking Wilhelm guy getting it. Oh, yeah. I mean, Gemma's dad was always a prick, but he straight up might be evil. There's a chance. I don't know any other geomancers. I'm wondering, um, so speaking about this hammer, uh, I have an yeah. ability called locate object. I don't know if that would be helpful right now. We might need have to get a little seen closer. It before? Uh, would this hammer be familiar to me from my studies? There's I will... only three in the whole world. Yeah, I'll let you roll a history check. Okay. I'll say DC 15 to be right, like familiar right. with it. Come on, that's fair. Let's do it. It's so fair. My history's plus three. So... Firm, firm but fair. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's a 16. Ooh, okay, yes, cool. Bitch. And uh, what's the range on it? Uh, a 1,000 feet. Damn it. Oh. <laughs> uh, it is not within a 1,000 feet of you. <laughs> okay. Can we say that like I, I did the roll and like I know what the hammer looks like, so sure. I'll, I'll know how to find it when we see it? Yes. I also have locate creature. We could use that on the, uh, on the winter wolves. Oh. Hmm. Wait, there's a lot of winter wolves. I don't know if that would be helpful. You know Toma. You met her. Oh, yeah. At the bar. So we Precisely. could find out where Toma is. Mm-hmm. And sh- they're at least good at tracking and they know Again, about everything. Again, it's only a thousand feet, though. <laughs> let's ah! head to the wall first and then All let's right. revisit some of these well, cool um, spells. Yes, I'm glad that we uh, had a little powwow. <laughs> mm-hmm. Cool. It's like we started, uh, we like turned the key into the ignition, but we didn't turn the car all the way on. <laughs> Bundle up, Balnor. It's about to get cold. <laughs> Balnor wakes up. Oh, do we, we got our full six. <laughs> I feel great sleeping in a chair. Ah, oh, my back. Uh, do you want some flapjacks? Uh, yeah. They all say they all have Melora branded into them, but I can write Pelora in syrup if you like. <laughs> I'm, I'm not really a Pelora guy. I'm not an anybody oh, guy. More Jesus what? Christ. I'm a uh, I'm agnostic. <laughs> I believe there's so like the somebody. I believe there's somebody up there. You know, like there's some gods, but they aren't necessarily like Pelor or Osmodius I've, or anyone. I've walked out. I left. <laughs> Found they were talking to himself. I tap him up. <laughs> so, what is your guys' plan for getting over the wall? Because you guys have this map yeah. that Joris gave you. Joris mentioned the southeast garrison, I believe. Yes. So the way the wall is set up, and based on what Joris told you, and based on what you can see in the map, the wall is basically a series of towers, mm-hmm. and then like wall that connects it. So at the bottom of the towers are these garrisons. Some of them are winter wolves. Some of them are city guard and, and like troops of frost wind. Yeah, I don't want so nothing to do with the city guard around here. Based on everything you know, going trying to go through a garrison tunnel that the army is stationed at, it's probably the worst idea. But you'll either want to probably climb the wall between towers so that you're not up in people's business as much or you'll want to try to sneak in a tunnel so i could make three of us invisible oh or uh, but i was where i was worried about the climb as well so well, as as because we i think that i think that if we have ropes it makes it easier for all of us to go over but we have like going one by one just you can uh you can lead climb I see sure. what you're saying, yeah. We, yeah, we can do that. So or I you go three go over. attached to me, and I just keep on hammering in mm-hmm. hooks as I go up. Yeah, I mean, whatever you guys want to do. All right, I think if we can, if three of us can be invisible at once, that kind of changes things a little bit. I think we could, 
at least get you three over and then tie me and then you just pulley me over as you slide down the other side of the wall. <laughs> sure. What about me? <laughs> You're coming with me. Yeah. Oh, you you and I are going. Okay, yeah, we're I could go. go in the bag. How long oh, can could I go in the bag? How long no. could he survive in Ten the bag? Ten minutes, I thought it was. <laughs> it's not long enough. Is there it's anywhere we could buy hang gliders? I can just pop my head every once in a while and grab some air, and just a little face will appear in the middle of the wall. I think they probably won't notice that. Balnor, allow me to bear that responsibility <laughs> of opening up your breathing hole. <laughs> I guess we could both go in the bag, and then there would only be... Oh, that'd be good, because I don't really want to use, like, a fourth-level spell. Because like, yeah. then that, that wipes out my other chances of using another level I mean, all of us spell. could go in the bag, and then Moonshine could just turn herself into a Let's spider and take her the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do all, all, of, all do three you... of you go in the bag, one and I'll bag. go invisible. One Wait, big bag. One big bag. One big bag. Wait, but you're actually a better climber, so oh, yeah. I, uh, the three of us should. can you cast invisible on me from, you, yeah. from the bag? I, I cast it on you, and then I go in the bag. Will the bag affect my concentration? No. She's got nothing to do in the bag except concentrate. Yeah. Okay, so for the bag of holding, breathing creatures inside the bag can survive up to a number of minutes equal to 10 divided by the number of creatures. Okay. Okay. I think that one of us should gaseous form through, and then the other one should carry the Balnor and Bev in the bag. <laughs> that's five minutes they'd have. That's five minutes. We Wait, can... five minutes? Oh, yeah, that's true. You can't climb 300 feet in five minutes. No, Probably other not. people can't. Hard one, sure for <laughs> Bastard of the Mountain. Balnor and Beverly <laughs> die get because it of the hubris. <laughs> All right. No, I they live because of my hubris. Hold on, we're at, we're at a tavern, right? Uh, yes. I go behind uh, the bar and I get some straws. Problem okay. solved. <laughs> Very nice. Ooh. We'll just breathe out of the straws in the bag. If you like pina coladas <laughs> and breathing in a bag. <laughs> okay, so you look behind the bar. You find some fantasy straws. Jumbo straws like you would use for like a, uh, a, a boba drink. A yeah. thick milkshake. Or a curly. boba drink. They're curly. Let's okay. order milkshakes. <laughs> All right. So you find some straws. I'm going to say for the purposes of this invisibility where you guys are really far away, people probably won't see uh, two straws going up uh, like a wall. <laughs> exactly. But I will say in the future, this shit is not going to fly. If you try to, like, if you try to sneak into like a vampire's just... mansion as like two straws, no. <laughs> but we established that we're in a bar that would have straws. That's the only reason. This yeah. is a negotiation. Okay, but what if okay. I throw another, what if I throw another second level spell at you? I'm oh, fine. Shit, that's third level. I'm fine okay. with the straw play. We no, tops? no, no, but what if I sweeten the deal? <laughs> by but he already said soul. yes, don't throw away your I'm spells. going gaseous form. Hard one's going invisible. I add a little plant growth to make the... That's just going to make plants grow all over the wall. We, which we, is we don't make... draw any attention Yeah, that'll be the super wall. noticeable. We already Tom Sawyer'd his ass. We're okay. good. <laughs> all right. So are you guys doing invisible now? How long do these spells last? Invisible, I'm going to do like, we're going to sneak right up to the precipice. Okay. Probably get as close as we can, yeah. Yeah. So you guys... Oh, we should go ahead and pass without trace. Natch. That is awesome. a good call. Mm-hmm. Very good call. Natch without trace. Okay. <laughs> Moonshine casts Pass Without Trace on all of you guys. You guys exit the tavern. You begin traveling to the eastern part of the city from the Fox and the Thrush. The city gets fancier the more east you go. But as you begin to approach the wall, it begins to get more militarized. And you see your first squad of iron dwarves. You see two big old iron dwarves and an iron dog moving about. Guys, go ahead and give me stealth checks. 25. That's a natural 20. Wow. Ooh. Wow. 30 on the stealth check. I got a 28. Wow. Okay. You guys you guys slip right past Donald these guys. Get? With a natural 20, could I sneak inside of one and pilot it? <laughs> no. Ooh. All right. You guys like duck into an alley as the iron dwarves go by. Bev, with your nat 20, I'll say the dog starts like sniffing the air and starts to go into one of the alleys. And you're like... Spider-Man legs splayed between like two walls. And the dog would notice, but my butt is so skinny that it's just like <laughs> that extra amount of space. <laughs> Saltine that ass. Skinny tush. Uh, <laughs> and these iron dwarves. Get that mousetrap ass. These <laughs> iron dwarves pass you right by. And so since you guys are going over the wall, I'll give you guys the benefit of the doubt. I'll say you guys aren't near 
uh, garrisons, so there aren't a ton of guys around, but you do see some Frostwind city guards around. They're these knights in full plate mail with they've got um they've got white tabards on uh that have like a blue fist like a gauntlet fist which is the sign of uh house coldane fuck the coldanes mm. <laughs> and you see the massive wall this wall far taller than the other buildings in the city about 300 feet high under mounds of thick ice and frost is blackened iron. You can still see Ooh. some of the darkness of it uh, coming through. Uh, you guys do see that there are some people working on the wall, like around it. They almost look like uh, window cleaners on like skyscrapers yeah. wall that are up there. Wall washers. Uh, they're breaking off like big chunks of ice and like polishing the iron underneath. Uh, and yeah, you guys see like a few of these guards around and stuff, but uh, nobody has spotted you guys yet. Uh, let me know uh, what you guys do as you approach the wall. Okay, so y'all, um, I just read that gaseous form. You transform a willing creature uh, you touch along with everything it's wearing and carrying. <gasps> oh. So I can carry the bag and, oh shit, but I, it is concentration you can gaseous form one person and everything that he's holding everything that they're carrying so if i'm holding bev and balnor and you gaseous form me yeah, yeah. oh but you're not gaseous form it would just be yeah me. well then why don't you right. moonshine why don't you get in the bag with us <laughs> he's just gonna gaseous form right through the wall yeah. um is there any one kind of big save- bag one big bag. are there any yeah, are there any kind of a what? saving throws that happen actually you know what that takes concentration so never mind okay yeah let's do it we're gonna just gaseous. We're form. getting gassy. Uh, how how thick does this wall look? Oh yeah, uh, I will say it's about fifty feet thick. Okay, so someone moving through a fifty foot wall at ten feet at a speed of ten feet can get by in like pretty quick, right? They're moving at a speed of ten feet, so then they would move. They would take a full dash action, so that would be twenty feet per round. It would only take them like a minute to get through the wall. Cool. Great. My speed's faster than that, too. But if, as a gas, you'd only have 10 feet, is what she's saying, I think? Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. That's what your speed is. So we're just going to need to hold our breaths and hope that uh, you don't get waylaid by some other gaseous form. All right, then. Buckle up. (sighs) Y'all, let's uh, dive into this bag. One big bag. One One big bag. bag. One big bag. One One big bag. One big bag. bag. (laughs) Balnor, uh... (laughs) Cannonballs into the bag. He's so excited to be in the bag with you guys. I jackknife. <laughs> Bev dives in. What do you do, Moonshine? Um, I do like a beautiful Olympic dive. Ooh. Yeah. Perfect uh, form. Usually I'm used to landing in like a big uh, pool of mud. So this is like a new feeling. I use minor me. illusion to hold up a two. <laughs> <laughs> Moonshine jumps in the bag. Balnor instantly farts a little bit. Oh, oh wait, shit. So I pop out of the bag and then I gaseous form hard one. Okay. Right. Back in. Okay. Hard one disappears in a puff of smoke along with the bag featuring all of you guys. You guys are in some weird in-between world. You guys are just <laughs> in this weird bag Can we dimension. Can we we're screaming like uh, <laughs> Ulfgar? Yeah. Ulfgar. Balnor's just like, what do you guys think's going on out there? Yeah, what's huh? Ulfgar's world like? He is a gem as a gas around my neck. <laughs> uh, so hard one, you are, you are gas. All right. Uh, I guess I'm going to take a quick tour of the city. <laughs> I'm a non-colloidal solid. <laughs> no, I guess I'm going straight through the wall. We're not. We have to navigate like cracks and stuff like that too. Oh, do you? Yeah, because we're going through like cracks in the wall, small holes, narrow, uh, narrow openings, cracks. I figured you just like uh, snuck- it treats liquids as though they were though it treats liquids as though they were solid surfaces. Wait, ice is a solid. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So this liquid. doesn't work. Okay. So be. Because there are not enough cracks in the wall, you think that we can't get through? Like, I, uh, I think I was picturing it being, like, sort of, like, a naughty earthen wall. But if there is steel iron, yes. you think that there's not I, cracks I, I, that I was picturing it as, like, just the straight-up Game of Thrones huge wall of ice and iron. Yes. So there, I, Yeah, I didn't think there was cracks in it. Right, so there's no cracks. So you're not going to be able to go through it based on the language of the spell, but you can go over the wall. Okay. But if you guys are in the bag, mm-hmm. you, guys, yes, will be. you guys will need to take a break when you're on top of the wall and do like one stealth check okay. before you can gaseous form again. I mean, I'm sure, twice. I'm sure it'll be beautiful up there, so we'll probably want to take the moment. Take in you the guys view. might want to take but it in. Hardwon can... Plop us somewhere that gives us the best 
stealth yeah possible, we're in between right? garrisons mm-hmm. just yep. so you all know we're not going to have pass without trace once we reappear maybe if there's like a big barrel you could stealth us into the big barrel yeah Ooh. i'm sure there's like a latrine up there <laughs> yeah stealth us into the latrine there's yeah. definitely <laughs> you guys can kind of surmise that there'll be you know supplies up oh, there and things our like that first gasp of air is just going to be a nasty latrine <laughs> take a big breath oh no <laughs> Oh, God, I'm always scared of snakes in here. <laughs> okay, so... So I reach a hand out the bag, touch hard one, <laughs> gaseous form. Are we all, like, sitting in each like other's a... laps? Yeah, it is tight in the bag. <laughs> okay. You guys are in, like, a tiny room. You guys are on a real small flight, all three of you sitting next to each other. I'm making sure Bev is in between me and Balnor so he doesn't get ideas. <laughs> what? I heard stuff happen in the timeout bag. I wasn't sure. <laughs> I'm a know. barrier boy. Yes, that's true. <laughs> Yeah. Beverly's here. Let's not. <laughs> Balnor definitely popped a mint Let's before not. they went in. And- <laughs> yeah, he did that Steve Urkel uh, mint spray. <laughs> Hard one. You turn into gas on the wind, as the poets say. You begin floating up along this wall, passing workers who are breaking ice on the wall and kind of polishing it and working on it. You see the city behind you kind of fade away, all the keeps and castles and shops and everything. And you begin to crest over the top of the wall. You see that there's this walkway with like elevators and such for the scouts and the guards to get up and down. It's just a beautiful fart cloud climbing a mountain. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, and as you get over the wall, you look out as a gas, uh, in your with your gas eyes, uh, you see all of the snow covered mountains in the distance and the big purple crack in the material plane. It lights up the sky even in the daytime. Someone's like, that gas over there has a huge ass. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> you take it in for a moment. Meanwhile, you're your friends inside are choking. They have just <laughs> run out of air. Uh, let go, Guys, go ahead and do me a roll and see, because you guys are between garrison, so there's only a few guys on this part of the wall, and there are some, like, barrels and various supplies. You see uh, that there are a few, like, arrow slits and stuff. Some guys have crossbows and everything, but the crossbows are just kind of laid up against the wall. Guys, go ahead and give me a roll to see how, like, diligent the guards are. If you guys do... if you guys are roll, each of us rolling? No, no, no. Just one person. Okay. okay. Uh, so if you guys get, like, 15 to 20, then these will be some real fuck-around boys, and uh, they won't even be looking for you. Maybe Jake, you're the hard guest one daddy. should yeah. roll. Oh, boy. Shout out to the core four. Oh. Oh. Four, hard, hard one. You get okay. it. Hold on. What do I? What's, what do I add to it? Nothing. It, that was just a luck roll. That's okay, guys. That's okay. I can make this work. Hard one. You fly up and you expect you're thinking like, these are the guards between garrisons. These guys are going to be taking their job that seriously. They are the last line of defense. But you just see, I fly up. Four. Thinking, these are the dinky dwarves. Four just. <laughs> Super ripped Cold Dane guards looking out into the snow, not talking to each other. Oh, no. One of them uh, turns to the other one and goes, have you seen giants? No, I have not seen giants. Anyone next to us? No. Good check. Good check, brother. Good check. Check next to you. Anyone there? No. No one there. Just the most diligent <laughs> men. I'm glad they're diligently looking in the opposite direction that I'm coming from. Uh, cool. So you plop down and you can hide behind some like barrels nearby. Let me or... know when he ungashes for yeah. us. Okay. Uh, yeah, I hide behind some barrels far uh, away. Everybody go ahead and give me stealth checks. Ooh. I'm sorry, but you guys oh, remember when I saved the old cop with a roll? That was pretty cool, right? <laughs> What'd you get this time? 16. The, these oh, okay. insanely diligent I guards. I only got eight. These guys rolled a one. <gasps> oh, yeah. I had a spell, though. I was going to in the wrong way. <laughs> one so of them pulls out are, a vape. And they are just... insanely diligent, but they are just watching the wall. I hate the giants. Do you see any giants on the horizon? No. No, I do not. We should look that way. Perhaps we should look east together, brothers. They all look and turn like clockwork oh, in the same direction. I feel moved by them. I, I barrel into them, them and push them all off. <laughs> we serve our city with pride. <laughs> oh, I'm going to leave a little mushroom for them. You make a little Ooh. mushroom and instantly grow some icicles. And check around for frost boss. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Get back in the bag, Moonshine. Hop back in. We opened the bag and you instantly made a mushroom and went fly hunting. (laughs) And I reached my hand out. I gash his form hard one again. Oh, yeah. Uh, hard one, you turn back I into like a gas. I like the idea that you're, 
<laughs> voice becomes gaseous. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I uh, guess off the wall right between one of those guys' legs. As, as we're leaving, uh, in a dwarven voice, I say, Frostwind sucks. <laughs> <gasps> uh, I slapped Beverly. <laughs> Young Bev. Uh, go ahead. They had a nice brotherhood going. Go ahead and give me a deception check. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, That's a seven. <laughs> okay. Uh, you say Frostwind sucks as Hard One turns into a gas and you go back into the bag. Uh, and one of these diligent dudes gets up and goes, what? Someone's on the wall. Someone's on the wall. And they uh, grab a horn and they blow it. <laughs> no. Uh, everyone starts to like rush into high alert mode as you guys uh, float down the wall. Um, Come on, we're still just like floating at a really slow pace. <laughs> you guys are floating at we're a really like, slow pace. Not even fall. We're not even going at a falling pace. We're going at a floating pace. Nice. Uh, you see, uh, the guys atop the wall are like furiously like looking for who it could have been. Everyone's gonna be mad at me now. <laughs> <laughs> um, below on the ground, you guys. Leaving Beverly in the bag. <laughs> uh, you guys see these big lumbering iron golems. Uh, they are moving very slowly. They look like big iron dwarves. They're like giant sized and they're just boom, 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 pounding along the snow. There are iron dwarves out here. There are winter wolves. You see Frostwind City troops riding like white rams. You see a bunch of guys in like formation doing drills and everything. And um, when the horn goes off, like everybody starts like turning to attention and stuff. Uh, you guys get to the bottom and you guys can't breathe anymore. Oh, uh, uh, a lot there, of guys. Is there any uh, tree cover? No, there's not gonna be any tree cover near the wall. How, but how far away is the, is the tree line? Um, pretty far. It's kind of like open tundra. Cool. I dive into the snow as deep as I possibly can. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. So you're going to yeah. like get down in the snow and I'm, just like hide there? I'm making a gosh dang <laughs> snow angel. I, I like that move. Okay, yes. So you go down as the gaseous form. You get like kind of deep under the snow, like a couple feet. And then you ungash his form, and you guys are all just like, I'm hey. joking. I'm yeah. joking on snow. <laughs> Balnor's just grabbing. Balnor's just furiously swallowing snow. What is you this hard can, mud? When I ungash his form, can, uh, I was big enough that I sort of created a little bit of a, a cavern, right? And I like. What actually happened is you guys just kind of buried yourselves in the snow. So you're just like laying Fine. in the snow. After, after like a little bit, you hear like another horn go off, and you hear the guy yell, Sorry, it's. False alarm, I like to be diligent. <laughs> and everyone just grumbles to themselves, diligence, diligence. Very I'd good. like that dwarf to be reprimanded because he heard a whisper that said Frostwind sucks and then blew Yeah, that guy, no, he overreacted. He's crazy. Was inspiring. He's clearly losing his mind. <laughs> I like them. Frostwind Guys, does suck. People... They got the cutest little voices. People know that like magic exists in the world and stuff. So when someone says something behind them and then it's gone. I, fi I figured that he would think that one of his brothers had said that, and then they'd all fight. They would never. <laughs> That's what the deception roll is for. Yep. Sometimes you make a good roll, sometimes you make a bad one. Sorry about that, guy. <laughs> I don't care. Not Does quite anyone as bad need. As when he threw dynamite at a dragon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nice job say. being diligent, brother. They yell up in the wall. They're just yelling oh. back and forth about how much they enjoy being diligent. Uh, See, uh, now this is beautiful. Now we have to lay here until it's nighttime. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are just freezing in the foot. Our no, body warmth will keep us. Don't worry, our body warmth will keep us cool head or to, warm. Head to toe, Beverly. <laughs> so you guys are kind of laying really low. You've kind of like covered yourself in snow. There is so much land here. It's kind of Game of Thrones style wall. Although the Game of Thrones wall is like five thousand miles or something fucking ridiculous. It also has a big forest near it. It also has a big forest near it. This one does not have a big forest near it. Fine. Uh, this one is just tundra, kind of hoth style. Mm. Um, but there is, after a little bit, you see the wind starts to pick up and a lot of snow from the ground starts to go into the air. Uh, and it gets very foggy and windy and dusty. And you guys are kind of able to stand up and you just pull your cloaks over. And from a distance, there are a lot of people out here, but there's not enough to cover the entire area of the wall. So you, guys are, able to, you guys are able to head off into the tundra. Cool, so we're just I... in the middle of a giant tundra now. A literal giant tundra. Ooh. hey -o. Okay. So, so you guys have this map. Joris had explained it to you that there are hunting lodges along the way. Oh, right. Uh, do you guys want to pave your own way, or do you want to stop at those 
lodges. I like All the right. idea of a lodge. I, li- I mean, that just sounds toasty. It sounds I want to go me. there. Yeah. I will say this is going to be this is going to be a little different for us. It's going to kind of yeah. be the first time you guys have ever had to do survival stuff and been out in the elements. Oh. You guys can get lost and you can just fucking die out in the snow. So you can try to avoid people entirely and just like lay low in like unmarked caves. Moonshine is a social creature. The nature of mushrooms is sort of a, a community kind Moonshine, of vibe. Mushrooms don't grow here. Oh my God. <laughs> I dropped to my knees. I started digging in the, digging in the <laughs> snow to try and find Papa, a mushroom. Papa starts digging. Papa, we got to prove him wrong. I guess there would be like a cold weather lichen. Is there a cold weather lichen? Uh, <laughs> tell me there's some sort of cold weather mushroom. Yes. Tell me there's a big, tell me there's a big frost mushroom the size of a tree. I don't care if you have to lie to me, Murph. <laughs> you see a big frost mushroom the size of a tree. Oh! It looks at you and it speaks. <laughs> Melora. Oh, I no. Frost mushroom. Moonshine's got frostbite. <laughs> yeah, she's already dead. Fungin's uh, father. So you guys head off into the tundra. Uh, the only thing allowing you guys to walk in all the snow is that the snow is so thick and icy that there's barely any give to it. It's just thick crunchy snow. The wind blows in your face like a frigid kiss of a thousand needles. Uh, Your cloaks blow until they're completely horizontal and you guys head towards the first tower. The first Winter Wolves Tower. It's about 10 miles away. Normally, if you guys were just doing a normal day hike, you guys could normally do like 20 miles in a day. This is going to be hard terrain. You're going to move at half speed. So if everything goes all right, you guys won't get any levels of exhaustion, but you got to get there. Can I uh, use Fine Steed to summon a spectral elk for us to ride? Uh, for one person ride, certainly. An elk's pretty big. I feel like two of us could get it. I Man. guess, can I misty, st- I mean, can I uh, wild shape into yes. an elk? Ooh. Yes, if you want to summon a steed and if you want to turn into an elk that hard one rides, that's cool. Oh, elk squad. Hard cool. one, hop on me. I still have a great donk, I'll, right? I'll say that, I'll say that bound. <laughs> I hop on before you're an elk. <laughs> <laughs> you break moonshine's back. Oh, right, hard one, well, buddy. Jeez. Hold on, because it's going to be a whirlwind. <laughs> Okay, Whoa, so this is even better. <laughs> Bev, you summon a uh, majestic snow elk. Oh, beautiful. It's it's albino. Yeah, what, okay. what kind of elk does Moonshine turn into? <laughs> I turn into a real gnarly one. <laughs> it's the most beautiful creature I've ever seen. Just big buck teeth Just on like, this yeah, otherwise it, completely majestic elk. This elk has got like British teeth. Like, huge udders. Like, yeah, huge, <laughs> huge it's pregnant, so pregnant udders. It's super pregnant. Its Alan, antlers look you, like waffle are fries. Are you pregnant, Moonshine? Is that, what th- is that what this means? Lord, I hope not. <laughs> Melora, visit me. <laughs> Uh, Visit me and relieve me of my sins. <laughs> uh, so you guys have, I'll say, I'll say, Baunor and Bev can go on the same uh, elk, and uh, Moonshine turns into one. Hard one hops on, and you guys are just a little deer crew. Yeah, sweet cloven crew. Uh, guys, so here's how I'm going to handle this. You guys are going to roll an encounter check, and you guys are going to roll a survival check Ooh. every two miles. So you're going to make five checks before you get to the tower. So, so whoever's taking the lead, whoever is like looking at the map and is like, we'll go this way, that person does the rolls. We're not gonna have everybody do it. My survival's plus seven. Survival or nature? At? Survival. That whichever, seems... No, whichever whichever one you wanna use, I'm saying. Survival is oh, yeah. plus seven. You should yeah, lead the you way. You should do that. Okay. okay. And that makes sense, you're the, you are the lead elk. All right, yep. this, this gnarly elk takes the lead. Let your okay. udders sway in the direction of righteousness. <laughs> 13. 13. Great. Okay. Uh, you see Balnor's got the map out, uh, and he's dictating it to Moonshine, and Moonshine is leading you. You guys don't, you guys are just in this fucking plain of insane snow. You guys don't know yet if you're on the right track or not, but you guys have traveled two miles. Go ahead and everybody give me a constitution saving throw as the wind and the snow is beating down on you. Uh, my aura works for this, right? Yes. Great. Oh yeah, yeah I'm, everybody's close. I'm like a. I'm That's like, gonna be a twenty-three for Moonshine. Nice, nice for Elkshine. Twenty-four. I'd also like to announce that uh, at my new fighter level, I get a I get advantage on Constitution saving throws. Sweet. Ooh. I think we knew that. I got Maybe a twelve. We did, but 12. I just found out again. So Bev, you're getting fucking chilly, dude. But everyone else is warmed by my presence. <laughs> Everybody else is warmed <laughs> by your presence. It's like that. Um, that old joke about the uh, the clown who goes to the doctor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's that, but it's you. Uh, so you take 
13. But Doctor, I am our of protection. Yeah, exactly. You take 13 damage, and you guys t- all take six. 13 damage. 13 damage. Just, oh, you guys no. are just out in the. Summer you guys are dwarf. out in the elements. This isn't. It's not. You know, damage of being like stabbed. It's just like wearing on your body. Like you feel shitty. Yeah. All right. Um, go ahead and give me an encounter roll. Just roll a d20. One through five is bad. Everything else is and I everything my, else is uneventful. I add my survival. Nope, nothing. This is just encounter. Just 17. luck. Okay, so Jake's rolling for it. That's established. Oh. Oh. Nope, that's it. That's it. That's one. All right. I okay. thought we all I had that's to do 17. it. Cool. Nope. Just one person does it. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, so, so I do survival. You do encounters. You cool. guys successfully go your first two miles. You think? Go ahead and give me another survival check. 11. 11. Okay. You guys continue along. Everybody give me constitution saving throws. I'm rolling dog shit here. Ooh. That's my second natural 20 of the episode. Oh, dope. Uh Uh-huh. I'll say natural 20. You're able to warm up. You do that kid thing where you put your hands inside (laughs) your coat uh, because they were getting really cold. Uh, You you warm yourself up. (laughs) Beverly had mittens clipped to his cloak the whole time. He just wasn't. He didn't have his hands in them. What do you guys get? I got 16. 16 and 22. Okay, you guys only take half. You guys take five damage. Uh, hard one, give me an encounter roll. One through five is bad. Five. Five. Hey. Mm-hmm. Probably the worst. Okay. Maybe a luck roll? <gasps> oh. No, 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 no. This is just what's going on around you. Uh, mm. This has... Uh, Can't control the world outside you. Okay. We roll like shit. Great. Haven't you met us? Yes. <laughs> so... You guys are traveling through the tundra. It seems like, Moonshine, you feel like you've got like a good bearing on where you guys are going and everything. And suddenly the wind and the snow starts to pick up and it is so fierce that you can't see the mountains in the distance as well as My you have been seeing them. My elk legs are kind of shaking underneath me. Yeah. All right. uh, so go ahead and roll your next survival check with disadvantage. I got a one. You got a one. Okay. Huh. But that becomes an eight. A one becomes an okay. eighth. Y'all, we are definitely in the wrong direction. Okay. You guys are kind of like snow blind now. There's so much wind and snow. Go ahead and give me an encounter check, hard one. Oh, no uh, no constitution check thing? Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Uh, everybody give me constitution saving throws. Thanks for reminding him. Sorry. <laughs> 25. Uh, 16. Okay. Everybody passes. You guys just take nine damage. I've got- Just nine? My body is so cold, but my cheeks are so rosy. If you touch them, you will be instantly replenished. That's the same thing about my huge tits. <laughs> <laughs> Your huge elkin udders? <laughs> yeah. They're so chapped. My huge pregnant udders. We got to get some bag balm on those. <laughs> Somehow your elk boobs are smaller than your actual. Uh, go ahead and give me your third encounter check. Jake. 17. 17. You guys continue walking for like another two miles. You see the snow starts to clear up and moonshine, you're able to get more of a bearing. And actually everybody go ahead and give me a perception check. Mm. 15. 13. Okay. Man, I've been rolling like shit. I used to have good luck with rolls. Oh, 16 actually. I rolled a three. Okay. It's been a bad episode. Yeah. You guys, all three of you see giant figures in the distance. A hard one to you, you're like, are those some close by humans? <laughs> <laughs> are there other humans here? Hey everybody, it's Emily here to talk to you about Aura Frames. Mother's Day is coming up and some of us are looking for a way to shower the maternal figures in our life with love. Well, look no further. Aura Frames are the digital picture frames that bring all your photos and videos together in one gorgeous, high-resolution display. They're super easy to set up. They save you from the struggle of printing and framing your favorite photos, but most importantly, they help you stay connected with family that live far away. That's because you can kind of preload a bunch of pictures onto the frame, but you also get to keep adding pictures, and you can invite the rest of your family to add pictures. The gifts you make mean the most So this year, turn your family's past into the perfect Mother's Day present with a connected frame from Aura. Right now, Aura has a great deal for Mother's Day. Listeners can visit AuraFrames.com slash Pawpaw to get up to $30 off on their best-selling frames. That's A-U-R-A Frames.com slash P-A-W-P-A-W. Plus, listeners can get free shipping with code P-A-W-P-A-W at checkout. This deal ends on Mother's Day, May 14th, so don't wait. Terms and conditions apply. Goodbye, sweeties. 
Hey there, Nadpoles. This episode is brought to you by Rocket Money. Do you know how much your subscriptions really cost, folks? Well, most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions, but the actual total is closer to around $200. Holy hell. If you don't know exactly how much you're spending every month, then you need Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions that they forgot about, and chances are you're one of them. Like that Stars app just to watch that one show or that free gaming trial you never actually used. Well, Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions for you. And for any you don't want to pay for anymore, just hit cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. It's that easy. Rocket Money also helps you manage all your finances in one place and automatically categorizes your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks a little funky. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. Wow. So stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to Rocket rocketmoney.com slash pawpaw that is rocketmoney.com slash pawpaw one more time for you rocketmoney.com slash pawpaw thank you moonshine you get a read on them you can tell that they're definitely giants bev you see there are two kind of bigger giants a mommy and a daddy sure Yes, you see a mommy and a daddy giant. Or a mommy uh-huh. and a mommy and a, and a daddy and a daddy. Good call. And you see Good call. they have a giant that's a little bit smaller that has like a chain around its neck, almost like a leash oh. that they're holding. You guys aren't close enough yet to totally get a read on that situation, but tell me how you proceed. I scream, is this your kink? <laughs> I, don't, I don't actually okay. scream that. <laughs> because sometimes <laughs> I say things. And they're taking fully seriously. Um, What do you think we should do? They're coming towards us. They're coming towards us. I mean, do we just try to be naked and honest and, hey, we're on your side? I feel like they're probably mistrustful of smaller folk. Absolutely. What if we could hide, spy? Hide and spy Mm. seems pretty good. Hide and spy. We hide and spy. So you guys are kind of just out in the tundra, but you guys are much smaller than these giants. So Mm. if you guys just like kind of... Duck. If you guys just lay down in the snow, it's going to be very hard. This is like Frodo at the Gates of Mordor style. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys we pretend to be trees. You guys just lay down in the snow, and after a bit. Again, second time today. <laughs> second time, you guys are just like crapped out in the snow. Just cowards in yeah. the snow. Just, like I just pussies <laughs> in the permafrost. This day I reluctantly, sucks I reluctantly so much. shut my eyes and just fall backwards. <gasps> Put, cr- cross your hands yeah. over. Like a trust fall where I know no one will catch me. <laughs> you guys see... This is the worst bachelor party weekend ever. <laughs> you guys hear yells in giant. You don't know the language, but you just hear like... <laughs> they say that too? They talk like that too? Uh, yeah, and there's some I shared words. It. You guys see some lone the, words. the two bigger giants throw the smaller one that has a chain around his neck on the ground and start just pounding on him, just start beating the shit out of him. Do do these giants look different? Like, are two of them frost giants and one of them is like a hill giant? You'll have to get closer and do a stealth oh, check. Oh, this is what Hirog was talking to us about, right? I think the, so. The We but, banished all the giants north of the wall, but there's they're like there's still like giant fractions. Sure, yeah, there's a lot of different types of giants. All right, I'm willing to... Should I'm we... willing to remember what we did with the trees. Yeah. I wonder if we could do that with giants. Yo, giddy up, Steed. Let's attack this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you guys just start. Uh, my utters, can I just real quick say my udders are grazing the permafrost as we oh, yeah. uh, skimming it? Creating like a really slick, milky ice behind us. I'm gonna have Baldur do a constitution saving throw to not throw up. <laughs> Uh, he rolls a 16. He swallows his vomit. There you go. He probably thinks it's a little hot. Or maybe he just got over Moon Tra- the crush that he had on Moon Tra- yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess I, I pat uh, Vishelka, which is the, elf, the elk's name. Okay. Uh, and we ride into battle as well. Sweet. Yeah. I... I kick uh, Moonshine with my heels, but not like hard, just sort of like yeah. a, a gentle like, Just like, almost is, like a fist bump yeah, rather like than... like this is yeah. the moment. Is yeah. there any milk coming out? Uh, should I roll? Yeah. <laughs> to see how fertile I with am? Advantage. What do I add to that? Uh... <laughs> A plus five. 
Okay, eleven. Not that. Not as fertile it's as not too milky. It's, it's not it's too vaporous. <laughs> <laughs> so the elks take off towards the giants. And as you guys get closer, you see that there are two frost giants. Uh, mm. They have these giant axes at their sides and wear patchwork armor, but they're built for the cold. You see they've got uh, light blue skin and scraggly white beards, but they're not wearing like heavy coats or anything. Uh, are, they, but, like, are they wearing like shorts, even though it's winter? Yeah, they're wearing, uh, they're wearing cargo shorts and sandals, <laughs> believe it or not. Awesome. I it's like you go to a Dave concert. <laughs> uh, but you see that they have a hill giant like on a chain leash. Uh, uh, he's got this big coat on, patched together from rags. Kind of looks like the giants. Not cool. Uh, uh, the wild giant. You the guy in, holding the leash. In Game no, of right? Thrones. Um, so they're not built for the cold. Uh, he's bundled up, but you see uh, he's getting the shit kicked out of him. All right. All of, a, all of a sudden, these fucking elks turn up, and you see these two frost giants turn you and go, what the fuck as are you I'm doing showing out up, here? As I'm showing up, my final leap, I transform into into moonshine. Oh, yeah, and I like am, and I leap off of her back just as she transforms into <laughs> it. Guys, do a performance <laughs> check. Okay. Do a performance check with advantage. Okay, I got 15. Okay. And I got a 12. Okay. Uh, you see one of the guys like nods and goes, oh, pretty good, pretty good. And the other guy goes, that's fucking bullshit. I've seen cooler. <laughs> Fuck you guys. Uh, everybody roll initiative. They, they go to grab their axes. Tiny folks. I hate little folks. This one's the littlest of all. He points to hard one. <laughs> you haven't seen my legs. <laughs> I see your legs. 19. 12. 12. Sweet. You guys all act... Before these frosties. Oh yeah, bitch. With frosty. Ah, uh, but you're not keeping it frosty. Oh, you don't know. <laughs> We're keeping it so frosty. You don't know how what it's like out there, man. <laughs> yeah. Wait, did we? Were the were there frost giants uh, in Smuggler's Bounty? Yeah, but they were they were bastardization. Okay. These guys. They were like uh, programmers who had never seen a frost yeah, giant before. Certainly, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They have beanies on, whereas these guys have cargo shorts on. Right. <laughs> We're not even fucking cold out here, man. Do they, do they have frosted tips, though? No. Uh, do they have frosted hair that looks no, like tips? No, the top half of them is very serious. Uh, looks like kind of a classic fantasy giant. Mm -hmm. uh, but the bottom half, it is a party down below. <laughs> I uh, like that. Hard one, you're first. Cool. Uh, I'm the one guy's clapping and kind of insu the other guy's insulting your performance. I'm going right for him, then. <laughs> Come on, man. He was pretty good. Nah, fuck that guy. He sucks. Yeah, you suck. You do. You're about to suffer the wrath of a Am summer I? dwarf. <laughs> oh, does that 13 hit him? Uh, 13 does not hit him. He just grabs, he does that big brother thing where he grabs your head. Oh, uh, no. So you're just swinging your axe, but out of reach. I'm really big where I come from. You, are you a dwarf? You look like a dwarf to me, oh, man. Oh, yikes. Okay, that's a 25 to hit him. 25 hits. Good. You just like straight up cut a finger off. Yeah, you just whacking at his toes. Knock it off. Fifteen damage. Fifteen damage. Uh, you slash at this guy's hand uh, as he was bullying you. Oh, you cut my fucking hand, man. <laughs> you know what? I'm not done. Actually, not done I'm gonna take my, my action surge. Yeah. 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 Murph is so good at getting hard one to take his action surge. <laughs> I <read. laughs> yeah. surge. Yeah. I, I crit. <laughs> you crit. <Yeah. laughs> oh, Surgeon and critting. You cut into his hand even worse. Stop hitting my hand. This you, is my bad hand now. You give him like the worst paper cut he's ever had. <laughs> 36. 36 damage? Yeah, I was a. Uh... You full on cut three Ooh. of his fingers off. Oh, my life. Man, each of these <laughs> are. I oh, no. Are my you life. a piano player? Yes. Oh, he's a professional no. Twitch streamer. No, I like to twinkle the ivories. Uh, Moonshine, he needed these to hold and the I, leash. I play. <laughs> Fair point. Yeah, I love yanking that ill giants. Fuck these guys. He kicks the guy on the ground. Oh, cool. So this was a hate crime. Cool. I missed with my second attack. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're Yo, so disturbed rolls, by his casual kicking of the unconscious hill giant on the ground uh, that you miss. Uh, Moonshine, that is your turn. All right. These guys seem like they could use a little uh, little taste of slow. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> We're already slow. Yeah, well, I think your AC's gonna get worse and your reactions are gonna go be bay. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, what did they roll? Wisdom saving throws. <laughs> oh, he's a plus zero, they're normal. Gotta yeah. go slow. We have average intelligence. We got a 16. <laughs> they both got a 16? I just rolled for, oh, you know what, I'll, I'll roll for both of them. 
One guy got a 10. All right, one of them slow. Okay. Which means <laughs> we can't minus one. two on AC and dexterity saving throws, and it can't use its reactions. Okay. Wow. And it only gets one attack per turn. And got that's it. the one that uh, I attacked, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hell yeah. It takes it a full minute to turn its head. Oh, and then I'm going to spores that guy who's missing three fingers. <laughs> spores but fingers. Spores just six. go into only it. Only for six, because I am not in <gasps> Does he grow form. little mushrooms from the nubs? Yes, I got to populate this <laughs> fucking tundra with <laughs> mushrooms. Spores brutally go into his finger nubs, and mushrooms start exploding out. Oh, my, this is the worst fucking paper cut I've ever had. It's beautiful. Think of it like flowers. I can't believe y'all don't have... Mushrooms up here. He, he new kicks fingers, you in the man. teeth. Uh, that is Bev's turn. Some new digits. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to uh, misty step uh, up to one of the giant's heads. Okay, so you mi- you disappear nightcrawler style and then appear next to his head. In the brief moment that you're gone, he goes, "Oh, I guess that kid blew away. He was a little kid. <laughs> Wait, but <laughs> Fuck can being we, little. Oh, can you we appear say next to that him? since I also know Misty Step, I can like give him a high five as he's Misty Stepping? <laughs> <Sure>. Absolutely. <laughs> you, you catch him on the wind uh, in the extra dimensional plane uh, that he travels. Satisfying through. as hell. Yeah. You slip me some Misty Digits. Cool, yeah. you, miss, you Misty Step onto his head. Um, misty all right. Digits. And then, yeah, I just want to wanna wail on his inner ear. Okay. And he's really Ooh. slow. Because then he might fall over. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah, can I just like toss a javelin into his inner ear? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can try to stab him in the ear. All right. Well, maybe not that time. Uh, that's What's their AC? I got it's a, a 13 because he slowed. Oh, fuck. I got Ooh. a 12. Damn it. No. <laughs> Damn. You pop up there. You're like, ha, huh, try this on for size. Try keeping your balance with your ear <laughs> trump on. You just like say too much and he very slowly swats you. I think I throw the javelin and it goes through his nose and gives him a cool septum yeah. piercing. <laughs> Thanks, uh, man. Damn, that looks awesome. That looks pretty cool. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to try again. Go ahead. All right. Uh, 15? 15 does hit. All right. Woo. Woo. Okay. So yeah, um, I just want to stab him. Damage. Ooh. Uh, 15. 15. Yeah. Okay. You stab him in the ear. And can we say that uh, as I stab him, I kind of like lean in on the thrust and now I am inside his head? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> we can't say that. <laughs> You don't get to just kill him in one hit. I don't, I'm not. No, I'm not trying to kill him in one hit. I just, just want to get be in his brain. No, I want to get like inside his ear. I'm kind of like hanging onto his ear. Okay, I, his ear is not. How big that head? How big that head? Mm. I'll say his head is two and a half feet tall. Okay. So his ears are maybe half a foot long. I don't know. Six inches like long. Like two Subway sandwiches long. Sure, uh, a subway sandwich long. Okay, so I can't get all the way in you there, but your, I can like you I put can your lean mouth my... and your nose in there. Yeah, that's what I want. Yes, uh, so much earwax goes in your mouth. Hey, how's uh, it going? That is. It's me, your conscience. Their turn. Um, so the non-hurt guy is going to swing down on Moonshine. I see that you slowed down my friend, and he's really annoying when he's slow. Oh, so you got an understanding of spells and whatnot? <laughs> yes, I'm metagaming a little bit. I apologize for that. Uh, he hits. He gets a 22 to hit. Oof. Oh, but my AC is 300. <laughs> oh, shit. No, you're actually yeah. fine. Sorry. I... God damn, that's a, that's a thick cowhide. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 21, all the utter. 21 damage. Okay. So this frost giant swings his axe down on you, Moonshine. Go ahead and give me another one. No, no, no. He oh. he got the one attack. Uh, go ahead and give me DC ten concentration check, con saving throw. Nat twenty, baby. Nat 20. What you does clear. that mean? Does it help me in any other way? <laughs> you are so concentrated. Ah. Uh... It's almost a wasted nat 20. Yeah, if only that came out when you were doing the milk from the udders roll. (laughs) (laughs) That would have propelled you forward. You would have had milk jets. Uh, We would have been running on the udders. I would have been making it extra slippery for the giants. (laughs) And we wouldn't have needed to attack their inner ear. I'll say (laughs) you keep your concentration uh, by just pissing milk everywhere. <laughs> That's where it was. Oh, yeah. You just release, you release everything. Actually, oh, wait, actually, you're, you're an elf again. again. You're an elf as again. much as I hate yeah. you. Does the transformation take a while, though, so you still do have the udder? Yeah, yeah, I think With it With the does. nat 20, you can keep the udders. Sweet! <laughs> yeah, it is now canon for the rest of the campaign. I shake my huge tits and my huge udders. <laughs> 
Okay, he takes a second attack. He tries to cut your udders off. Fair. Uh, ooh, I don't think he's going to hit on that one. That's just a 13 to hit. He rolled four. He whiffs big time. I don't know what this is. This is confusing to me. Brother with a You're nat reaching, 20, huh? you can keep the udders. Uh, this other guy who is slowed is going to... Have only one attack. Yeah, he's going to swing at Beverly. The one that's, oh, he's going to like punch his own head? <laughs> I mean, you're not in his head. No, but I'm on his head. He can swing, he can make an attack on you. All right. Uh, he hits. Okay. <laughs> so how hard does he punch himself in the head? Does he knock himself out? No, you're on his shoulder. He has an ax. He swings up behind him and he hits you for 32 damage. <laughs> oh. Jesus Christ. 32 damage? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, they're strong. All right, y'all. We're starting to get into healing. All right, Belnor. That is Belnor. That is Belnor's turn. Don't worry, everyone. I'll save you. Balnor runs forward and swings at the slow guy. I'm going after the easy one. Uh, and he rolls a six. Balnor oh, hits uh, the hill. Oh, oh wait. Does Balnor hit with a six? No, he misses. Balnor misses on his first attack. And Balnor misses on his second attack. Uh, Balnor, get back that in the was bag. Hard to do. I'm gonna punish myself uh, again. No. Balnor crawls back. Just in the bag. make sure that the hill giant is okay. Uh, hard one. That's your turn. All right. I'm gonna keep on attacking the uh, guy with uh, mushroom fingers. Okay. Don't call me mushroom fingers. 19 to hit mushroom fingers. <laughs> Fungal fingers. <laughs> bop, My bop, name bop, is bop. Frosty Fingers. <laughs> 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 Not anymore. Wow. I rerolled. I rolled a one and the and a two. Now I reroll that. Great. 14 damage on the first attack. Shit. My father named me Frosty Fingers. Not the... going to have sympathy for a guy that has a guy on a leash. <laughs> he, he kicks the guy on the ground again. <laughs> what, this guy? 24. He, he walks on him. <laughs> 24. <laughs> I'm going to hit him for doing that. <laughs> he, like, cut. He brutally cut his calf. Ah. Uh, 14 damage. Jesus. Okay. Going after the calves. The calves and the calf knots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's Moonshine's turn. The giant's too slow to get that joke. <laughs> you know what? Oh, yeah, yo, what is the move here? I, You know what? I kind of like Bev going after the inner ear. Inner ear you gonna, so you... I'm going to misty step up to <laughs> yes! the other one and attack his inner ear. Get this off is my not ears. strategic as much as I see what Caldwell's going for and I want to manifest You're picking it. up what I'm putting down. We are <laughs> canal pals right now. <laughs> Are they just going up there and swinging at his head? Yeah. Okay. I'm um, going, oh, not his head, his inner ear. Inner ear. You're going to pierce his ear. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the anvil or the stirrups, perhaps. No, He's going to give him a galdang infection. <laughs> He's going to need tubes after this. Oh, frosty fingers oh. having the bad ear day. Fuck me. <laughs> bad ear day. <laughs> What'd you roll? 11. That does not hit. Aww. You pierce his ear. Oh, thank you. This guy's pure septum. All right, well, his spores is in her ear. <laughs> Wait, are you, yeah. you on the same giant or are you on the another giant? She's on the other giant. Okay. Oh, you're on the other giant. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think 11 still wouldn't hit, though. No, 11 definitely We have hit, made them way too hurt. fashionable, though. Yeah. Okay, but you pierce that guy's ear. But, but I also spores his inner ear. <laughs> That's more important. I, I hear poison. But only for six. <laughs> and, because... and I hate it. Uh, <laughs> That's Beverly's turn. Okay. Um... Can I try to be his conscience and tell him that what he's doing is wrong? <laughs> sure. Go ahead and use your action to do that. Okay. Hey, what do you think you're doing, man? This uh, is a hate crime. You know this is wrong. Are you doing any spell? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm using my persuasion. Okay. <laughs> I have a backup plan if this fails. If you get a fucking D20, you gotta Murph get a is going to have to eat his little attitude <laughs> It's, all, right it's just a nat 20. There's no... <gasps> it's got to be a natural 20. I mean, oh, you're going to need like a 40. This, this is just convincing funny. someone. Wait, we have to pray. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, that's a five. But my persuasion <laughs> is seven, so 12. He says, I don't care about okay. things. Okay, then as a bonus action, I use my mage hand to reach inside his head and grab his inner ear and pull it as hard as I can. <laughs> uh, you, these aren't how these spells work. Uh, <laughs> he takes a crack at you. <laughs> he rolls a two. Woo! That's right. Stop grabbing Divine my justice. ear. <laughs> Uh, the, they really are butchering this fight. <laughs> the, <laughs> these guys have like 200 HP still between oh. them. Uh, this one guy takes okay, two okay, swings okay. at Moonshine. 
I'm on uh, his shoulder, though, so he's hitting himself. Stop hitting yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm letting you guys climb on them for, like, funny stuff. Misty they can step. still Misty hit you. Misty step. We But Misty they can hit you. It. They can still hit you. You don't become invincible just because you're on. This is not... You're not I Daffy Duck. I would think he would take some damage if he was He hits himself. you on the second It's a big act. Attack. You'd think he'd at least, like, chop into his Y'all, delt. I'm probably going to go down right now. Oh, wait, really? Do you yeah. need to look at my amulet? Uh, I wish I could. Not can I look turn. at his... Okay. 26 damage. I'm down. <gasps> Uh-oh. Bang! Hits Moonshine with the axe. Swats she flies me like off. a goddamn fly. Uh, Wait, do you have the Featherfall ring? Yeah. It's, it's like 20 feet. You're fine. Oh, okay. okay. You land in the snow. Yeah, it's it's fluffy snow. Um, Balnor goes, no, my girlfriend! <laughs> <laughs> I, Even from the afterlife, <laughs> I cringe. <laughs> I shake my head. <laughs> Balnor uh, runs forward emotionally uh, and God, tries to swing so at this guy, and he hits. Oh! All right, use it, Balnor. Uh, he hits Work him it, for buddy. ten. Whatever it takes. <laughs> uh, and he takes a second swing, and he hits on the second swing. You just see, he's just, he's just using pure dad yeah. strength. Just, ah, 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 just so jerky. Fight for your love, Balnor. Uh, and he does another Defend ten. Defend her honor. Balnor hasn't worked this hard since he tried to get the lawnmower to start. <laughs> <laughs> you guys just hear, you guys are working on the other giant. You just hear loud grunting over Whoa. the blizzard wind. Does, uh, does Balnor have action surge? Balnor does have action surge. Seems like a time to use it. Um, I'm going for it. Uh, he hits again. Wow, what a turn. Things are looking up for Balnor. Balnor hates like, these clowns. I hate, I hate this. I hate this damn clown. He besmirched her honor, Balnor. He crits. <laughs> really? He, he crits. He's yes. crits. Crit for me, yes. Balnor. Crit for yeah. me. <laughs> Moonshine is on the Can we at least say that Moonshine is like still not, she's like, death hasn't totally taken over yeah. yet. <laughs> yeah. She's sort of like, it's like saving Private Ryan, like flashes before yeah. her eyes of Balnor just critting on this guy. Oh, Bal- Balnor, Balnor oh. does the Brad Pitt Achilles like climb up, side <laughs> stab into the guy's neck. He goes, oh, how the... This little fucking guy <laughs> jumps off eating a tuna yeah. sandwich. <laughs> he bites the tuna, stabs into him. You should have hit his inner ear, Balnor. <laughs> Actually, I think you shouldn't. I think we were barking up the wrong tree. Uh, that's it wasn't hard a tree, turn. it was a giant. Um, yeah, that's true. All right, so I'm going to try to whisper in this guy's ear. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll swing my axe at him. Cool. Oh. Y'all balk, but one of these days. Oh, wait, one actually, of these days. Uh, he's still. S- oh, he's not slowed. Oh, uh, 16. 16 hits. Oh, because I fucking went out. out. Oh. Nine damage. Nine nine damage. Got it. Okay. He is quite hurt. Great. I'll swing my axe at him again then. Go for it. 24. Uh, that hits. <laughs> He's lost so many fingers. <laughs> 15 damage. 15 damage. He is on death's stoop. <laughs> Not the door. Give me a death saving throw. 19. There you go. That's a pass. That's gonna be a success. That's a pass. Uh, That's a pass. <laughs> I'm really. I'm Akarat, really, <laughs> bring her back with the coin, Beverly. I'm really uh, regretting going for the inner ear <laughs> because I knew what the right decision was was to summon a bunch of giant insects. But uh, you should have put an enterprise. You could have put bugs in his ear. <laughs> It is. It's like Beverly convinced you to jump off a bridge, and I he and he landed gracefully it. in the water, and you landed on a bunch of rocks. Yeah. Beverly, it's your turn. Okay. Um. Shit. I should probably get down there and heal Moonshine, huh? Nah. I, I yeah. I mean, that's true. I could contribute more. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Okay. I'm gonna. Hmm. I guess I'll just jump down. That doesn't seem smart. I'll let you do an acrobatics check if you want to try to like launch off of him, so you're fast enough that he uh, can't grab at you. All right, yeah, let me try and just like acrobat down. I'll take okay. the opportunity attack if, if I need to. Okay, uh, go ahead and give me an acrobatics check. Okay, cool. I don't want that to go down. But if you do go down. That was, can I roll that again? Sure. If I, if <laughs> I do if go down. Not if it was a 20 though. If you do go down. <gasps> That's a 20. Is that 20? Yeah, no. You launch Where your... was that when I was trying to be his conscience? Come on. <laughs> Honestly, this is probably this more This is probably right. You oh. launch yourself off this dude. Do I run all along his axe? <laughs> sure. He goes to <laughs> he goes to baseball swing you. Uh, you run along his axe and hop over to Moonshine, land in the snow right next door. Touch hands, baby. Wow. <gasps> I touch hands on your udder. <laughs> oh, thank you, my pregnant udder. <laughs> How much are you healing her for? Uh, I have 40 to give. Do you want 20? That'd be, yeah, that'd All right, be I give her 20. I give her half half of my surge for the day. Cool. Wow. Thank you, young Beth. You deserve it. After all I've put you through. After being canal pals. 
Canal pals look out. I whisper for each in your other. ear, this time we're gonna make it work. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, effectively infiltrate my brain. <laughs> this time it did <laughs> work. You're a good person. You guys are wow, just whispering in each other's is ears. Speaking to me. <laughs> The frost giants <laughs> descend on you. <laughs> uh, uh, oh wait, uh, can I, as a bonus action, can I use my amulet on myself? Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So you heal up with your amulet. Uh, this hurt guy uh, chases you down. I want to do baseball swing, you, you stupid kid. Uh, and he swings at you, and he's gonna hit. It's twenty-three. To Sorry, hit. but I'm a bit of a curveball. <laughs> <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> You'll be funnier when you're dead. Uh, oh no. Uh, 19, 26, 32 damage Yikes. on the first hit. Are you standing? On the first hit. I'm still standing. Okay. Uh, he takes a second swing. Uh, that is a 19 to hit. Uh, oh, that's my AC. That's yeah. your AC, so he hits again. Shit. 28 damage on the second. Oh, I'm down. No. He it's okay. I'll heal you. Cracks Beverly, axe across the chest. Beverly flies into the snow. Uh, that's the other Frost Giant's turn. He's going to swing down on Balnor, because Balnor has been yeah, getting his cracks Balnor. in. I respect you now. You will die. Uh, he hits Balnor on the first swing, cuts into him for 25 damage. Oh, God. What is Balnor's HP? 59. Ah. Uh, he takes a second swing at Balnor, and he rolls a one. He whiffs big time. Uh, Balnor, That's what you get. Balnor does a back bend. Oh, Balnor my back! Bend. You hear a crack. <laughs> does it fix it? <laughs> yeah. Can you Whoa. roll? Oh wow! My, yeah, I'll roll to see if his back problems are fixed forever. Uh, <laughs> Nineteen. 19. Yeah, that's a, that's a Balnor, Balnor. crit. Wow. Woo. Feels like going to the uh, old chiropractor. Uh, Balnor's looking pretty robust. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Balnor's gonna swing on this guy. Balnor's been kicking this dude's ass. Uh, Thank he God. hits. Someone took this seriously. Uh, just me funny myself. Uh, he only does six damage, but he takes a second swing. He hits again. Wow. He's having a good couple turns. Uh, he does 11 damage Way that time. Way to be. Way to be, Balnor. All right. That is back around a hard one. I'll swing my axe at the hurt guy. Okay. He's, he he is so hurt. He has no fingers. Hey. He has just cut Beverly down. He's just like really proud of himself, though. Um, the hill giant. Yeah. Is he like incapacitated? Yeah. He's knocked the okay, fuck out. Cool. Eighteen to hit. Eighteen to hit. Uh, that hits. Nine damage. Uh, he is on death's door. Let's see if we can bring him. He's knocking the on the doorway. door. Yeah. Let's knock, ring that knock, fucking knock door. Nineteen. That hits. Ooh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are yeah. you gonna be able to do one damage though? That's the question. I did another nine, baby. Okay, Whee! hard one. Finish him. I hand my axe to Balnor, <laughs> the brave. <laughs> Balnor. He, uh, uh, of the bent back. <laughs> Balnor takes the axe, takes an opportunity attack from the other guy, gets axe in the back, dies. You, you get him down to one HP. Balnor throws a throwing axe, and no look throws it through his eye. Ooh. And then Balnor turns and goes, wow, wow, that worked. That's you're cool. The, you're the man, Balnor. <laughs> hey. I pretend to still be dead so I don't have to compliment it. <laughs> Mucha, did you see that? Balnor, yeah, you're up, no, right? Sorry, I've been dead. You're up. Yeah, no, I'm up now, but. Uh, You've earned a ride in the bag. <laughs> the frost giant punches him in the stomach. Oh, he farts. <laughs> oh, come on. His back throws like, out cool. again. His back, yeah, his back <laughs> cracks. Uh, Moonshine, that's your turn. Okay, I'm going to heal young Bev. Okay. Uh, uh, I'll heal wounds. train. Cure wounds. Fuck it, dude. Let's do a four, let's do a fourth level cure oh, wounds. What the Johnny. fuck? Young Bev. I need it. You're insane, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, All right. I, sorry, I really didn't see what just happened. So <laughs> Did you see me? True. No look. The hard one you saw it. Let's just be chill about it. <laughs> right? Let other people Wait a second. Tell but if I'm doing a high level cure wounds, I I only add my spellcasting ability modifier. Yeah, it's four d eight. Once. Yeah. You oh. Just do the d8s. Then I think I might not do a fourth level. Maybe That's fine. Maybe I'll do a second level and then just do two two of them on you because then you'll get oh. more. Do what you got to do. I Jesus, am not being picky. Bad. 11. I'm so 11. sorry. I rolled. Bev pops back up. I'm up. dog shit. That's good. I'll roll. I'll heal you next time. Okay. And then I'm also going to throw my body in front of young Bev <laughs> so that no one can fucking <gasps> okay. go for him. I'm gonna like tortilla over him. <laughs> All right, sweet. Okay. Moonshine, you're a good person. <laughs> Moonshine <laughs> in front of Bev, utters in front of Moonshine. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's true. My udders are like a listen little, to your little gun. Listen to your little Beverly Cricket. Don't let anyone tell you wrong. You got a good heart. <laughs> my conscience is being kind today. Uh, is, is it my turn? turn? Yeah. All right. I'm done fucking around. Uh, it's time for a wrathful smite. No, not a wrathful smite. It's time for a searing smite. Ooh. Uh, and that's flames, baby. Oh, and I also, I also, uh... Spores him? Spores the cool. guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for six. I remember fire daddy in my heart. <laughs> but not well enough, because I got a three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's an 11 total. Okay. Uh, I think Man. a smite, you don't have to waste a spell. I think you Yeah, yeah, it's only if I, okay. it, only if I attack. So All right, so let me try of, my second you attack. You just think of fire daddy for no reason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what are you always doing? <laughs> I'm doing well, my son. <laughs> Wait, he doesn't have a Russian action. <laughs> nope. <laughs> You've been talking Sorry, about Russian accent yeah, all day. I can't speak <laughs> in character voices that I aren't love all those little Russian voices, accents. though. Okay, that's going to be a 20 non nat. Yes, that super hits. Woo! All right, searing smite time. Cool. Um, I just wear see. a t-shirt out there. It's not even cold to me. <laughs> <laughs> your friend's dead, and all you're talking about is how it's not oh, cold. Oh, frosty fingers, no. <laughs> Whatever, that guy sucked. He kicks him, too. Was he really yeah. a piano player? Yeah, he's a beautiful piano player. <laughs> now, he was a rune gamer. I've watched his streams. <laughs> um, that was a, That's a 13 damage, and then I believe the way this works is... All right. Attack deals an extra 1d6 fire damage to the target and causes the target to ignite in flames. <laughs> I fucking hate the fire. Yeah, I didn't think you'd like it. Uh, so let me do that 1d6. That's a six. <laughs> he just lights on fire. <laughs> it just looks really, he like, you smite him. It's this grand attack, just like this burst of arcane energy. He gets hit, and then like a full 10 seconds later, there's like a little ember, and then whoosh, and he just starts crackling. Uh, I turn around as the flame ignites and say, let your conscience get you fried. <laughs> <laughs> it's his turn. He swings at you. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm super dead. <laughs> Oh, no, but my, 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 my body, I tortillaed around Beverly. But he ran forward and he attacked. <laughs> but I tortillaed. All right, he'll attack Balnor. <laughs> because of the, the tortilla I, I tortilla roll. around Balnor. <laughs> uh, he rolled no, a four Balnor anyway. Balnor can take it. He missed. He <laughs> missed. Hey, look in the DM guide about tortillaing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Beverly's invincible right now. He can't be attacked. Uh, he hits Balnor. <laughs> He's he can hit me. He's going to fucking kill Balnor. No. No, he's not. Bal- Balnor might get knocked I had tortilla around Balnor. It's a double gordita crunch. <laughs> no. Everyone can't tortilla around everyone, God damn it. You say that until we tortilla around you, then you love it. <laughs> he fucking loves it. Damn. He's smiling. Uh, 20 damage. Uh, Balnor is on death stoop, but he's okay. Oh, I'm just Lord. on the stoop. He's checking his mail on the stoop. He spits blood out. Can't kill me, you son of a bitch. Yeah, he seems fine. He's doing fine. I heal Bev again. <laughs> Moonshine, blow him Woo. a kiss. This is the last swing I ever take. I'm taking I, uh, you to hell with me, piece of shit. He's I, like, oh, fuck. He's just completely fucked up. I wipe my underarm and then blow it at him like a kiss. <laughs> He's just so inspired. Uh, he misses his first attack. He hits with his second attack. Great. That was when he saw the. That was when he saw the uh, <laughs> blown <laughs> armpit. Heck uh, hath no fury like a dad scorned. Cool. That is back up to hard one. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go and swing at this giant too. Cool. I'm inspired by Balnor. <laughs> How's a? Hey, don't forget, I got this amulet by the way. Great. Um, if anyone needs help, uh, I don't need it right now, but I did roll a two. So mm-hmm. shout out to the crew. Namaste. Hate you guys. <laughs> Nineteen hit second time. That hits. 14 damage. 14 damage. Okay. Oh, wait, no, 11 damage. Then. 11 damage. Yeah. Okay. He is on death stoop. Okay. Along with Balnor. Along with Balnor. Oh, no. It's a crowded stoop. It's just Balnor spits blood on him. It's like the bloodiest Bloody Sesame man. Street. I'm going to kick your ass, bro. Uh, Moonshot's turn. All right. I'm going to start with my reaction and spores him. Okay. Is he dead? No. <laughs> Mother <laughs> He was only on death stoop. Now he's at death's door. All right. Bev. I will hit you up with the heels later, but I feel like we got to try and finish this guy, so I'm going to attack him. I got you. Rosaline. Strike through. <laughs> Oof. God, that was a big... 17, though. That hits. Ooh. Yeah. I can hear that thud. I know. <laughs> Bragging like, about how he's wearing a t-shirt and he just gets stabbed through the heart. <laughs> no. You should have not worn that. <laughs> hit him for 15. Moonshine. <gasps> finish him. All right. I would like to prop... The hurt Beverly up in his inner <laughs> ear and say, yes. and say, just make him feel so bad he dies, <laughs> and then Beverly can speak as his conscience. You should have been a better person. 
<laughs> You're absolutely right. He cuts himself in half with his axe. It's shockingly easy. Oh, <laughs> he just like Harry Carey. He rips apart. He doesn't have organs. It's it just like one big see, ham hock. The motion that he uses is so insane. He just has the axe in front of him, and then he just just uses wrist power to spin it around. <laughs> but you hear his bones snap as his wrists turn 360 degrees, <laughs> and he cuts himself in half, and he just plops on the ground. Wow, we should have done that from the beginning. Yeah. yeah. I guess Bev did try. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was a good plan after all. All right. Just took some time. Just took some doing. How about some heels? How are you feeling, Bev? Um, I am feeling about 11. <laughs> yeah, let's get you some heels. I'm feeling 11 to fine. spits up some blood. Okay, I'm going to do a second level heel for Bev. So that's going to be... Ooh, Here, Balnor, suck on this Ooh. amulet. Yeah, I just spin Balnor's head around into the amulet. Okay. Bev, I just fucking maxed out on you. Wow, what do I get? Uh, so that's going to be 15 plus 8, 23. 23, perfect. Cool. And Balnor then... heals up to, uh, he's looking pretty healthy after looking at the amulet. Oh, okay, he doesn't need anything? Uh, he could use uh, like a regular We don't want him to look or... too healthy. Like a first level? Yeah, first level will get him back up. I'll take a gander at the amulet. 11. Okay, he's back up to full. While you guys are kind of healing up, you hear the raspy breath of the hill giant. Oh, yeah, you're here. Uh, you hear him kind of like choking. Can I grab Bev's amulet and show the... Oh, good idea. Cool. I could, uh, I could also touch hands him. Whatever whatever you would like. He's he's at like zero HP. He's super fucked up. Hard one. Let me touch hands him. I feel like that's a more personal approach. Sure. Cool. How much, how much do you want to give him? I'll give him 15. Okay. Bev, you walk over to this badly beaten giant. You see, uh, when you see this hill giant's face, besides the hill giant bartender, you, you haven't seen too many giants. You see that he's got, you know, kind of just exaggerated human features. He's just got like, you know, a big rounded red nose. He's got like big kind of droopy ears, uh, very red face, uh, and he's all bundled up. Uh, but his, his, his nose is broken. He's all super fucked up. Um, you hold your hand over him, you touch hands him, his breathing goes from raspy to, and he looks up and he sees this little halfling and he goes, who are you? What are you doing here? Hello. You see, he like, uh, kind of scrambles back. No, 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 it's okay. It's okay. Tiny folks, we're not friends. We Uh, just released you. We just killed your jailers. He looks over. You weren't at friends with those guys either, were you? Frost Giants. Uh, he he goes over and he he just starts pissing on one. Oh, I like this. I, I hate in. these guys. Uh, I do the same. Yeah, piss on them. <laughs> all right, I piss on them too. Okay, you guys all. I don't even squat. I use one <laughs> just... of those little like fem funnels. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what you've been keeping that for. <laughs> yeah. Do you use the the horn that we can use to summon spirits? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> As you guys, as you guys piss on these frost giants, this dude does not like tiny folks. Uh, but go ahead and give me a persuasion check with advantage because you're you're pissing on yeah, giants. Yeah, boy. Uh, just one person. Okay. Uh, can Bev, I do it? Bev's I rolled done. a nat twenty. Oh, oh shit! Did you really? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. He wouldn't lie about that. No one lies about a nat twenty. Cool. No. I have way too much honor. <laughs> so you guys hate frost giants too? Big time. Yeah. Uh, fuck these guys. Tell you, tell, the world's gonna be a lot different when we're fucking done with it, man. These guys here, they wanted me to sell out Brother Hirok, but I lied to them and I brought them out here in the tundra. They wanted to know where the hill giants were, where we escaped to, but I fucking told them a lie. I brought them out here. I was gonna let them kill me before I betrayed the cause. That's I, metal. I take out the coin yeah. from, uh, from our dude. At Smuggler's Bounty. The world is full of unlikely friends. <laughs> he looks at the coin and he goes, Oh, from when we used to have our own cities. Where'd you get hold of this one? Uh, Hirog, down in Smuggler's Bounty. Hirog's not in Smuggler's Bounty. Hirog's climbing the mountain. He's gonna break the world. Oh, so, Are you sure? Because Hirog made us a really mean scorpion. Yeah. Does Hirog have a son or anything? Yeah, Aura. Yeah, son. No, he has a wife named Aura. Wife. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, his son's yeah. name is Hirog too, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That You're... Hirog. Yeah. That Hirog. He's going yeah. to break Hirog the world. Hirog Jr. Oh, Hirog Jr. is going to climb in the... We are going to break the world, and then the hill giants will finally be on top. No more little folks bossing us around or frost giants. That's a really 
it's really pessimistic noble. take, and I don't think you're entirely. Okay. It's just slightly nationalist. Yeah. yeah, it's just like not that well. We're gonna out. mix it up. God, you piss for a long time. He yeah. just continues to piss. <laughs> yeah, you don't even use your hands. I I don't agree with your stance, and also mix it up is not a great slogan. So let's work on that first. Yeah, I think I think what we really need here is a PR intervention. I would say. Brother Hirog, our leader, inspired us. He has the fire touch, and he will lead us to greatness. The fire touch. Mm. And that's where we'll end our session. Oh. Woo! Wow. Oh. Brother Hirog, the prodigal son. The fire going, touch. I can't believe it. Just I, try and fire I touch me. But I want to be allied with the giants. Hey, maybe we can be. I know. I'll break the world. But <laughs> maybe we chose the wrong side. Maybe we should have run into that situation and helped them destroy this hill. Let's <laughs> kick this guy That seems out. very, very possible. <laughs> now that I think about how we killed a bunch of guys in cargo shorts, <laughs> like maybe we're in the wrong. <laughs> they, were, they were bad guys. All right. Well, hey, don't tell us anything right. until we're on the short yeah, rest. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whether or not violent uh, slave-holding frost giants are bad True. guys. We'll talk okay. about that <laughs> over on the short rest. Spoiler alert. Patreon.com slash NADPod. It's going to get political. Yeah. <laughs> uh, guys, we have stuff to plug. Uh, watch Hot Date on Netflix. Me and Emily yeah, Sketch baby. Show. Buy our book. It's called Hey You Up, How to Turn Your Booty Call into Your Emergency Contact. Yum. Satirical Relationship Advice Book. Uh, written by me and Emily. Available on Amazon and Audible. Caldwell. Uh, just watch Cartoon Hell. That's yeah. all I got this week. Yeah. yeah. We, uh, we all have stuff on Dropout, College Humor Streaming Service. You can watch Fantasy High with me and Emily. You can watch Lonely and Horny Hey-o. with Jake and Amir. Uh, Jake, you got anything else to plug? <laughs> just beard oil, just, baby. Yeah. Beard oil. Just you better fucking leave, beard oil. You just hawking leave my wares. That. Where, can people leave buy, that where can people buy that there. beard oil? <laughs> Brothersisterco.com, oh, son. Oh, yeah. Buy that beautiful oil. Thanks, yeah. guys. Uh, cool, Great guys. for your nasty hobbit feet. <laughs> <laughs> you can't put it on your feet. It'll feel good. <laughs> I put it on my blank it's face. It's oil. It you can do whatever you want with it. Put it in your damn salad. Are yeah. you trying to expand the real estate of your beard? I genuinely do put it all over my face. <laughs> That's not good. No, it is. Oh, because it's like moisturizing? I mean, yeah. yeah it's, I'll, uh, I'll read you guys all about the benefits of these oils uh, after off mic. That's true. <laughs> I tried everyone to, else, just come to the website. Then we talk about them there, too. I tried to punch Jake earlier, and my fist just slid right off of him. Yeah, yeah damn right it did, baby. You lost it in my beard. His beard came alive <laughs> Skittles style. calling it. You guys know those commercials. Anyway, <laughs> um, that's what we're going to end the episode on. <laughs> we are, we are. <laughs> uh, follow us on Twitter, guys. At CHMurf is me. At Caldy is called. Well, Addy Axford is Emily. And at Jake Hurwitz is Jake. And tweet about the show using hashtag NADPOD. That's N A D D P O D. We are, we are. The youth, youth of the nation. We are, we are. Youth of the nation. It's the end of the show, everybody, and that means we need to shout out our benevolent Council of Elders. Oh, the people of Bohemia, thank you. You bring them to life. Starting with Matthew M., the Bullywug Prince, is being married off to a lizard princess. They're both disgusting, but luckily, they both find each other extremely attractive. Yummy, Brad D., the only pebble pod that isn't craven. Once had to kill a spider for Denny. That spider? Charlotte from Charlotte's Web. That spider is not scary. J Loma 72, aka Steelbreaker, Hard One's Jimspiration, always pops his shirt off during a run, even if he's in the frozen tundra. Yeah, but if you're really strong, you rip your shirt off. Ooh. So, Andrew A, aka Feldsbar, Lygarden, the Half Elf. Feldsbar is Half Elf, Half Super Diligent Frostwind Guard. Andrew's parents made it atop the wall, and his father kept an eye out for giants the entire time. That is being it. Diligent. Taylor Papa the Sixth, a legendary bard to whom no item isn't an instrument. Taylor once played a song so chill, even the Frostwind guards let their guard down. Thirty men lost their lives that day. Dylan B, a super weak wizard who wields twelve swords, accidentally invented blade singing. Juggling all those swords together creates a kind of wind chime sound as they warble in the wind. Danny P, Bahumia's resident artist, painted Hard One's senior portrait at the Dwarfenage. Danny painted Hard One as a frost dwarf, as a goof but it made Hard One cry. Wow. Danny felt bad, so he drew him super ripped to make up for it. Hard One just cries at the drop of a hat, you know? Tom P, father of the realm, the serenader of sleeping babies. Tom P's methods are so effective, his family slept through the whole Galateron Civil War. Things were quite different in the morning. 
Spencer Caspru, patron elder of libations, ale maker to gods and heroes of Bohemia alike, made an IPA so aromatic that even Glad had to break his vows to have a sip. Mmm, just a nose full of hops. Pedro E., bard of the mountain, likes to take a tiny amp and just rip it on his guitar in the middle of the valley. Gets a great sound out of that thing. Griffin SD, a.k.a. The Stranger, the Silver Dragonborn Eldritch Knight and owner of the Badger's Pint Inn and Tavern. Update on the Badger v. Stranger case. The Stranger has mm. been arrested for the Badger's murder, but okay. Papa believes he's been set up. Oh. We'll give you more info as the story develops. <laughs> beard Man Dan, the longest beard in Bohemia. Beard Man Dan's beard is so long that it crosses plains. Bev's dad tripped over it in the Fey Wild. Scott D has been to all the same cities as the band of boobs, but took the time to sample the guacamole in each. Oh, yum. Aaron C, the strongest being in Bohemia for their size. Aaron, however, is the size of an ant, but ants are pretty strong for their size, and Aaron's even a little stronger than them. Stronger than an ant. Hermes W, the Bat King, was asked by some northern bat lords for help in a military skirmish with some southern fruit bats <laughs> Hermes refused unless they bent the knee and when the proud northern bats didn't Hermes took their heads a brutal dictator Marv will you please introduce a giant fruit bat <laughs> just an honorable fruit bat no Oh, T. Alex, a bard who plays jazz at the Blue Mana Inn, feels pretty conflicted about it now that the Chosen have moved into town, but those knights have a lot of coin, and he just bought a condo. Parker E., a brave journalist who wrote an expose on Theala for the Galateron Times, won mm. a Pulitzer, but was also beheaded. RJW, a wolf man who's been hanging out with Luna. They say they're just friends, but I don't know. They hang out a lot. Spartus successfully used Mage Hand to pull a giant's brain out, Whoa. a feat Bev could only hope to achieve. Bev is slobbering over that. Adam R, the R rated assassin. He's rated R because it says ass twice in his nickname. And he's thinking about adding a third. Adam R rated ass. Ass assin. Cassandra MHP turned into a gaseous form to escape a dungeon, but dug the freedom so much that she stayed that way. She's currently roaming the world as a gas. Must feel nice. Danielle the Dastardly Dame. Danielle is so dastardly, they once tabletopped a teenage dwarf and threw shit in his mouth. Can you imagine anything so sinister? I can't. Hugh C, a.k.a. Haldor Frostback, MVP of the Giant Wars, crewed in the SS Stormborn and fought alongside Elias and Red. In fact, the two giants the B.O.B. just fought both had their asses kicked by Haldor back in the day. If anyone had thought to mention him, the giants would have just run away. Oh, okay. Good to know for next step. Manny the Mundane, accident deity who got in the way of a lich's spell to reach divinity when your meter runs out and you're sure you got a ticket but you get back to your car and you don't have one that's Manny delaying the meter maid. Daniel Yu, a.k.a. Multifor, the many-faced magician, in addition to their magic show, they also put on a mean ventriloquist act. Very creepy. Jordan DJ, <laughs> legendary DJ of the realm. Their bass drops are so powerful, Hard One is thinking about getting rid of all the cannons on the SS Stormborn and just blasting out Jordan's sick beats from his ship to rock his enemies off course. Jeffrey S., Lord of the Fjord, born of the sword and cutter of the cord. Jeff has been thinking about opting <laughs> out of his cable package. Good on you, Jeff. <laughs> Cutter of the cord. Speaking of Cutter, Cutter W, a high elf dandy turned Crick Barkitect, personally designed Old Cobb's home gym, where Old Cobb went to do one million crunches to get his perfect V. Lex Sketch, the escape artist. It's not what you think. People often commission Lex to do artist renderings of famous escapes. He's currently working on one where the band of boobs flee smugglers' bounty. <sighs> I would love to see John S, a.k.a. Schubert the Mushroom. Since the band left Schubert, he has quadrupled in size. He's just as adorable, but now he's huge. Ryan M, already proving himself to be the best pickpocket in Frostwind. It's only been a few hours since the Thieves Guild was established, but he straight up thieved with thousand gold from the bootlickers. Elena C, the lone party animal who continued to keep the dance floor alive even after Gemma was killed. A lot of folks said it was uncouth, but no one could deny that Elena had some 
Oh, th awesome, though insensitive moves. A true monster. Andrew M., the Bohemia record holder for holding his breath in the bag of holding. Andrew Big Lung, they call him. Love a Big Lung. Ricky, a.k.a. Tricky Ricky of the Cricky. Ricky inhabits the tallest stump of the Crick. So tall that other people might even call it a tree. But don't let Ricky hear that. He's very sensitive. Michael McD., head mixologist at the Blue Mana Inn, recently did the entire realm of service and outlawed Jaeger bombs at his restaurant. Uh Okay. Victor T. Balnor's boy whose loving dad was ripped from his family and transported to another world. He misses his dad most during the long Austrian <laughs> during the long Austrian Hungary winters. <laughs> when he and his father would sit by the fireside and talk shit about the Balkans. Henry A., a super buff halfling who is often confused for a thin dwarf. Lance W., a fierce tabaxi that's using a ball of yarn as a mace. His opponents think it's cute, but when but then he strangles them with the yarn. Justin I., a beholder optometrist who specializes in oversized contact lenses. If you got big eyes, Justin I. is your Justin guy. Love it. Caleb was the first dwarf to ever re refer to the dimensional cleft in the Frostwind Mountains as the Gash. They were personally tossed off, tossed off a cliff by Morden. With good reason. Clayton M., a claymation Dalmatian, tried out to be a winter wolf, but the cold weather made their malleable clay skin far too brittle. Too bad. TJM, a.k.a. Toe Jam Mage, a super disgusting wizard who uses toe lint as spell components, currently hunting frost giants to prepare for a ninth level incantation. The professional, the only lawyer to ever successfully beat Popeye in litigation, also the star of the hit video game series, Po Prosecutor, Professional Possum. Oh my goodness, so cute. Jacob C., a dwarf with super long legs, they are beloved by all in the mountain for their ability ability to reach stuff on the top of the fridge, but they have to get all their pants custom made. Elena M., a monk who loves Monk, the TV show, currently studying the way of the Golden Globe to be more like their hero, Tony <laughs> Shaloub. <laughs> Gone off, a city halfling whose feet tattoos go all the way up to their head. It gets real inappropriate about halfway up, too, but gone off, don't care. They're gonna be a pro skateboarder when they grow up, so it's fine. Mick Pucks, the Codemaster who created our amazing website, once partook in a dark ritual to make Clippy the Microsoft paperclip real. It did not go as planned and McPucks has the paper cut scars to prove it. Ooh, future enemy for Band of Boobs maybe? Perhaps. Earl and Kathleen L, a couple of warlocks who found a loophole in the system by becoming each other's pack demons. It's a sexy Ouroboros of unlimited power and Ilset is fucking pissed he didn't think of it first. Dylan M, a talented executioner who kills people with a broadsword clenched firmly between their butt cheeks. Whoa. Known throughout the land simply as the Bumble Beheader. Okay. Jab G, a wizard who invented the incredibly popular spell Goopy Form. It's much less useful for sneaking into places, but kids love it. Corbin A, an Arakakra who graciously donated all their feathers to the Frostbite Thieves Guild so that they could have super dope bandit hats in exchange. Joris stole them, the king's warmest down ski jacket. Atlas Storm Reaper has hidden journals all over Bohemia. Only by finding them will you be able to uncover the secret of why they keep losing their goddamn journals all the time. Jostrich, an ostrich named Jocelyn who loves travelin and javelins. I love both too, Cameron Mickey. The Bongo Bastard. Next time you're trying to make a stealth check, watch out. If you roll one, Cameron's gonna pop out and go to town on their bongos right where you're standing. E.L. Drake, a.k.a the Dragonaut, a party goblin who was cursed by Cord and turned into a sentient beer keg. Whoa. Sure, they can't speak or move, but they never get hangovers anymore, and they're always the life of the party, so it's a pretty even split. Cameron C., the tea tea fling, makes the best cup of leaves in all of Bohemia. It's so good, you'll want to eat the bag, and you'd be right to. PJW tried to gash his form across the Frostwind Wall, but took too long, is now permanently stuck in a barrel of oil, waiting for the dwarves to stop being so damn diligent. Daniel R., probably best known from the Bohemian viral video, Dan Damiel. Not a lot of people know, but the white bands they're so famous for actually give them advantage on deception rolls. Quentin J started the beloved Crick summer tradition of Fourth of Crick Lie, where you have your whole family over to your stump and set off fireworks until someone's stump catches on fire. A beloved tradition. Josh S, the award-winning documentarian who bravely filmed and photographed what was happening in the East Crick for the film Into the Fog. Dom R, a half-orc whose other half is halfling. They jokingly call them 
themselves a quarterling, but only to mask the pain. The orcs look down on them, and the halflings are all scared of them. They just don't know where they belong. Tragic. Jeremy B., a goblin who is so attractive, they are constantly getting mistaken for a gnome. Logan C. invented the hot dog in Bohemia. Sure, we think it's really commonplace, but in Bohemia, it's a freaking big deal. They even make hot dog sliders there. Why don't they make hot dog sliders? We could learn a lot from Bohemia. Baby Doc is the Crick's most beloved rom-com storyteller. Baby Doc spends hours by the fire weaving tales of polyamorous meat cutes and romantic orgies in the Time Out sack. Jennifer V., the owner and proprietor of the now shuttered ice cream shop Scoops, which was hemorrhaging money because everyone in Bohemia was coming in and scooping, then mini cooping without paying. <laughs> Colin G., a libertarian who believes kings have gotten too big and powerful and wants to go back to a simpler time when power resided more locally with the feudal overlords. Sure. Matt H., <laughs> lead guitar and vocals for the Bohemia and jam band slider party <laughs> matt h was matt h has super high constitution which lets them jam for hours without needing a break jacob j a wizard who's going through a warlock phase because their parents are getting divorced destin c joe the praying mantis is most trusted advisor as the most popular praying mantis at the crick joe has a lot of responsibilities heavy is the head that wears the crown but joe wouldn't be able to get through his day without the advice of destin c <laughs> Devin B., a dangerous mind style teacher who's been taking on Bohemia's greatest foe one student at a time. Illiteracy. Hasn't gotten around to the band of boobs yet. <laughs> Nicholas R., the elk that impregnated the pregnant elk moonshine wild shaped into. Yum. Jack W. owns a very chic chain of inns called the W Inn. There are the only inns across Bohemia that each come with an Olympic-sized swimming pool. John W.G. is a theatrical bard who got all the other bards together and started BAG, the Bard Actors Guild. They have great health care and decent <laughs> overtime rates. <laughs> Aaron K. I love all these mundane ones. Aaron K., the mortal who once worked at a Mexican restaurant and was so good at making tableside guac, the eldritch god stole them away for their poolside cabana. Aaron K. is so skilled at tableside guac, they can chop an onion without shedding a tear. It does send them into fits of laughter, though. Michael L., neither a frost giant nor a hill giant. Michael L. is instead a meadow giant. They are huge, buff, and so peaceful. Meadow giants are beefy pacifists <laughs> who much prefer to flex their impressive physiques on some devil sticks or a hacky sack. And finally, Sam H., an ent that is also a treehouse so you can literally live in your best friend. Live in your best friend, <laughs> and you are all my best friends, and I want to live in you. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> much for listening thank you to all of our patreon subscribers and our council of elders catch us over uh on the patreon for the short rest and next week uh for the hearthside chats episode we'll catch you guys next time that was a headgum podcast <laughs>